Good evening, everybody, and welcome. <laughs> uh, we have the pleasure of being joined by uh, Kebtris tonight. Oh, tries a little. Is is he's gl glitching up a little bit over there? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, looks weird. Looks fine. Does it sound okay? <laughs> yeah, sounds fine. <laughs> but it looks <laughs> it looks pretty cool. <laughs> It's you're this we we're using Skype, which is something we have not used in a in a while for this. Uh so I mean it's I guess the, the program has changed a little bit since the last time we used it. Maybe it's less reliable now. I don't know. Uh yeah, so we are gonna play some Mega SG tonight. Uh and uh Kevin will hopefully be able to give us some background on development of the system and you know, we can just talk about its capabilities and and different stuff we were talking about you were talking about how this the system itself like it the doing the 68k took about four months two and a half months oh two and a half months okay yeah the gen like to get the genesis running it was about four months yeah four and a half months something like that to actually have games actually playing properly um so you you felt it was a lot easier in general than the super nintendo yeah i would say it's probably a bit easier 68k was a lot harder but the system itself was easier at least mm -hmm. had you had anything done previously related to the genesis other than you know the master system components no i had nothing i started from basically the ground up <laughs> wow that's that is that's crazy i mean that's a i mean i guess Probably the most challenging thing about the Genesis is probably the, the sound at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like even still now, I mean, you there, there's there's people that are just are crazy about the sound on the Genesis. Like they can hear things that that, that I, I can't hear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's it is it is insane the amount of like detail that of things that people can hear with it. Um. I don't know. It's it is it is something. I mean, that... spe speaking for myself as someone who did not grow up with the Genesis, and I've only had one for about six years. I like the default settings on the Mega SG because it sounds really clean to me. But you know, there's people who kind of want the exact little level of grit and grime <laughs> uh, to the sound. Uh, that, you know, they're, you know, that's what, that's what all the settings are for to help you dial that in, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I prefer the clean sound. That's what I was going for. So that's mm -hmm. kind of basically what it ships with, but yeah, there is that filter on there. So if you really want the filter of that ladder effect, you can turn them on. The filter is still some point of contention. You know, people want the roll off to be different. So I'm probably going to work on that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But the audio itself is really good. It's just you know, they just want the filtering to sound mm -hmm. the same. And, you know, there's yeah, like I, I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. I saw we got a ten dollar donation from Johnny the Whiz Kid. Uh, thank you. And he's asking about uh, problems showing NES because of a black vertical bar only on the computer screen. Don't want to mod my NES. Will the OSSC fix this problem? Well, if you don't want to mod the NES, the OSSC. Won't, it won't work with the OSSC because it doesn't take composite input. So you would probably want to look into the retro tink, uh, which does take composite. And I'm guessing your capture issue has something to do with it. Your capture card not accepting 240p correctly. So if that gives you a starting point. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just start playing. Um, yeah, go for it. I'm, I'm starting with Thunder Force 2 tonight. Uh I didn't know this was uh, an overhead game until... Uh... It has overhead levels. Oh, okay. Okay. But it starts off overhead. Right. Yeah, I, di I didn't know that because, uh, you know, you were using Thunder Force 2 as, uh, as an example for audio stuff in the video. And you didn't give me any footage for it, so... Oh, no. I, I was using it as kind of a test to kind of dial in certain aspects. Oh, but was it not mentioned in the video? Uh, I don't. I don't think I used. Oh, any it wasn't of that. the comparison, but you did mention that it's like the ladder effect is used in Thunder Force. Too. Right, but, <laughs> but, but I didn't have any, any footage, so I, you know, loaded it up on the EverDrive, and I was like, "Oh, this is overhead." It actually seems really cool. 
Yeah, like I mean, it's, it's just just because it was different from what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, I'm not very good at it. I had this game as a kid, but I'm not very good at it. We'll see, we'll see how I do. And I'm using the uh, the 8-bit dough uh, M30 2.2.4 gigahertz controller, which uh, I mean, it's, I it's, think it's is definitely the best the 8-bit dough's done because like. Like the other controllers that are like trying to be so exactly the same thing, like are kind of a little bit off. And this one like is more inspired by, and I think that kind of makes it a little easier for me to get into in a way. Yeah. Uh, and also because the D pad is just so much better than the, the previous eight bit days. What were, were there any particular games that gave you a lot of debugging trouble? I mean, was, was it any easier that Genesis doesn't really use like the expansion hardware in the cartridges as much as Super Nintendo does, or did that not really make a difference? Nah, that doesn't really make a difference. Once you have the bus timing working, you know everything just works usually. Mm -hmm. I had some issues with uh, Virtua Racing, but it wasn't that hard to get it working. Mm -hmm. That's the game that everybody like wants to see running, but they never yeah. want to play it. <laughs> but, but yeah, but nobody wants to play it. Yeah, uh, I mean, the other thing that I thought was interesting was that uh, that new game Tanglewood. Um, yeah. The there's like a, a little fuzzy character on the title screen that I guess is a different color if it recognizes like different like real emulators hardware. or different hardware or something. And oh, really? I, I didn't know that. It, yeah, well, it's the it's yellow on the title screen um, on the Mega SG, which means it, that, like that's the color on a on a real Genesis too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even tested it. Well, there is like a demo of that game, but right. it, I don't know if it has a title screen. I can't remember. I don't think it does. Yeah, I've I've not I've not tried it. I didn't even know about it to be honest until Corey was talking about oh well that's that's actually i should be getting my copy soon yeah it was good timing i got it right before as we were making the episode so like a lot of stuff like i mean how 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 much did having the super nt done help with like kind of getting a foothold on the mega sg because you had like you, know, you already had like a really good scalar engine. It just kind of had to be adapted and stuff like that. Yeah, I did some improvements on it too. So it's, you know, it's uh, quite a bit different. And oh, like yeah? the system is totally redone too. It's not the same that's on the NT Mini. Oh. Do you think that there's ever a chance that you would go back and implement some of those features into the Super NT if you have like. Uh, like all the time in the world to do whatever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, I want to do some super NT uh, upgrades and you know bug fixes here. I just gotta get the MSG you know all settled in. Right, right. Yeah, just uh, keep 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 in mind seven uh, X vertical scaling on the on the super NT for from a super Game Boy. You know, just just <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> You That's love, literally the only feature it. I want on the Super NT still. I want 7x vertical for Super Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> want that? Um, is uh, is Game Gear going to support 7x, or or is that part not finalized yet? No, it does. Yeah. Okay. Like, is all that functionality already in the system? Like the the core settings, the scalers, all the different settings that they have. It's just that the adapters aren't there. Yeah, yeah, you know, it works um, through the through the adapter, but, you know, it's not on sale yet, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, do, is there any, does anybody know when the, uh, when the adapters will go on sale? No, I don't know. And, and, and we noticed they did tease the, uh, the, uh, analog, analog adapter. Or the, yeah, the, the, the DAC. The manual. Yeah. Yeah, the DAC, yep. It's, it, it, I mean, it says 2019, so it, it could be really any time, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, is is uh, is is it too early to talk about about 32x in regards <laughs> to the DAC? 
Well, the goal is to get it working with the DAC, so right. We'll see. Does, does it like? I mean, as far as you know, does the is the thirty two X working? It's just I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, there, there's not there's not a ton of great games anyways on the system. I don't think, but there's, there's no, a lot of people I, that it's not... like it was like people like I can't believe it doesn't have. Well, I mean, like, there, there were there were a few comments that were like, "Oh, th thirty no thirty two X is a deal breaker for me." And I'm thinking, really? Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> like, sure, it would be like I, I mean, people aren't even considering like all the reasons why it's not there. I mean, w if like I mean, <laughs> apart from the time of reverse engineering. 32x and sega cd i imagine you would have to like i mean you'd have to have a, probably an extra fpga altogether inside the thing i would oh, guess yeah. right or a bigger one or a bigger one yeah but the current one i mean you know i i'm guessing it would not fit two of those systems in there. yeah probably not yeah the sega cd is you know it's a whole nother Genesis and then some pretty much. Yeah. It's really complicated. It's got, you know, its own video and audio hardware in there and another CPU. Another did, CPU. Uh, <laughs> did, did you have to reverse engineer any of the Sega CD? Like, did you get like a good ways into reverse engineering Sega CD just to make it work? Or did you not really have to? No, oh, I did a little bit just to get it to work, but I didn't really do a whole lot other than I replaced the belt on a Model 1. <laughs> I got to do that with mine, even though I, my my original belt is still working, but I I feel like I need to just do a maintenance run on it or have somebody do a maintenance run. Have you found any differences in in behavior between Model One and Model Two? Because like Corey had some troubles on Model Two, but he hasn't even had that system for that long. So I mean, it could also be like mechanical issues. Like, are you aware if? There's issues that might come up on one or the other, or as far as you know, you think they're pretty much the same? Well, electrically, they seem to be about the same, but the Model 1 kind of sucks. The CD <laughs> drive in it. Um, on mine, the locking cam is worn out, so when you put a disc in there, now you know I changed the belt, it'll, it'll load the disc in with the tray, and then when the game starts running, it'll, like, make this noise. It'll be, like, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> like, because the hub is hitting the holder for it. It's not the disc rubbing, and it slows it down too much, and then the game will run reliably. Uh... I, I, I was I was so annoyed when I was, I was trying to get some shots of the Sega CD tray opening with the Mega SG on top of it, because, like, I took it upstairs where i normally shoot my footage but oh, i didn't have a tv quick. so i had it i had it set to um i had it set to uh boot straight to me to menu and then all i would have to do is you know make sure the controller was on and then hit the a button to run cartridge and i waited mm -hmm. several seconds and then hit the start button or no the, the reset button to make the the tray come out and it wouldn't do it and i was so annoyed and then i brought it downstairs and it worked it, I, I think my sega cd is i mean it's a model one i think it's like it works great once it's going but i feel like sometimes it like doesn't get power or something, uh -huh. or something. i don't know something's flaky about it like in that regard. And so I was like, fine, I'll shoot these shots downstairs even though I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other thing I noticed on it was, you know, I had the tray issues on it. But also the laser power, you need to raise the laser power. At least I did if you want to run CDRs reliably. Oh, oh interesting. So that's a, like, that's a, that's a hardware tweak you can make? Yeah, there's a pot on the little sled where the laser is, and you can turn it up a bit if your CDs aren't working very well. Like, mine, you know, it would work, and it would, you know, like, have to reseek and all that, so I turned it up a little bit, and that fixed it. Uh, was, um, was Sega CD, like, definitely 
like a pretty sure thing when the project started or was it more like well we'll see well it has the port on it it better work <laughs> <laughs> right but i mean like like was that port always there like oh, from yeah, the beginning? Yeah, it was always there yeah okay yeah i had the cd uh working fairly early on was uh was it a challenge to make it this make the whole package the same price as the super nt or did it just kind of fit together I, I, and no, and that's not my department <laughs> but you did design the board right yeah i designed the board and the you know i did the board software and the fpga stuff oh we got a five dollar donation Try if you want to see that on the stream, it's going to oh, pop up. Yeah, it's on the stream. Hey, Keptris, do you recommend any particular projects for getting started with Verilog? I have about 20 years experience programming in other languages, but not sure where to begin with a hardware project. Where is that? Where is that at? I can't. Oh, it appears on the, it appears on the stream. Oh. I was just asking. If, <laughs> I it, it. Yeah. Uh, it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, it was, a little, it, was, it was a little fuzzy on the stream. He was just asking if uh, he said he has 20 years experience experience programming other languages, but was was wondering if you had any uh, recommendations for starter projects for Verilog. Um, uh, hmm. I really don't know, actually. But I knew, I can tell you one thing, programming Verilog is definitely not like programming any other, like, computer language like C or whatever. Even though if it may look similar, it has nothing to do with it. Every Does, uh... Mm -hmm. Is there a particular software interface that you find to be helpful for writing it? Well, usually you write it in the integrated development environment of your vendor. You know, like, you know, Altair, which is now Intel. You know, they have Cordis. And then Xilinx has um, Vivaldo, I think it is. It used to be ISE Webpack. Do you think one of those is like easier for someone starting out than others? Oh yeah, definitely. The Altera software is so much better than the Xilinx <laughs> software. You know, I don't know anything about the chips. If the Xilinx chips are better, I know they're slightly cheaper, but the software is much, much better on Altera. Wasn't uh, the Zimba designed as a, a Xilinx? No, I've never oh. designed anything with a Xilinx part. Okay, so it's always been Altera? Yeah, that's a Cyclone 5 on the Zimba 3000. That's two Cyclone oh, okay. 5s, actually. In fact, one of them is the same one that's in the MSG. Ah. What, what's, what's the difference? Because I know that, like, not all Cyclone 5, like, Cyclone 5 is not, like... like it's just the family. Right. There are several Cyclone 5s. Kind of like, yeah. I guess, there's, like, multiple I-5s and I-7s, etc. Yeah, there's uh, um, three kinds, basically. There's, like, the one that this is, this is the, the E version, and then there's, like, the GX version, which has the ARM core on it, and there's a GT version that has some other stuff. And then there's different sizes. You know, they get bigger and smaller, for example. Oh, God, looks there, like was, there was a $2 donation from Frank Yeager. Saying, uh, hey, Captress, PC Engine slash TG16 in the future? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... I I, I, think a, I think a maybe is probably good enough for for most people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, deciding what to do next is is probably a huge challenge. Oh, yeah, definitely. And obviously, it's, it's not, 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 not for you to decide. And well, I mean, unless it was just one of your own projects. Yeah. Yeah, my projects tend not to really be video game related at this point. <laughs> yeah, you've got like the display uh, reverse engineering and stuff like that. Yeah. Actually, I just got another one in um, this week. I'm going to try and make a video on it fairly soon. I'm going to run Game Boy on it, so it should be pretty cool. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, because I'm... Is I, it... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go on, go on. I, just, I was just saying, it's got to be... The follow-up has got to be challenging, because, like, the Genesis was, was obvious. Yeah, as, I don't think anyone... Anyone would... No one was surprised. <laughs> like, the only reason to have doubted if the next one would be... Genesis is because analog had never done Sega before. Right. 
Well, I think everyone was like, yeah, it's got to be like the net, whatever the next one is, I think is it's, it's going to be a surprise. I think. Yeah, it's probably going to be a big surprise, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we got we got a ten dollar donation from Muhammad Al Tamini ta, 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 Tamimi. Any plans for 32X? Well, you're kind, you're kind of talking about, musing about it earlier. Yes, it's just well, in the, terms of... In terms of the DAC. Yeah, it should work with the DAC. That's going to be the... But, but not, be, not that's not a promise yet, I take it. No, I can't promise anything. So this is just my own personal thoughts here. This isn't anything official. Right, right. But, you know, the 32X cannot be added to that FPGA. Well, the cards don't fit in the slot, for one. Oh, really? They don't? Okay, I wasn't... Yeah, I, I, wasn't... I, I think they I think they're bigger, aren't they? I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't have any 32X games. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of just assumed that they fit, but... I, yeah. I thought in the review know. video, someone tried to shove a 32X cartridge in there and it doesn't fit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> One one thing I do like about like the design of it is that the the cartridges don't go as deep into the system as they do into a real system, so you can like look at the label art while you're playing uh-huh. <laughs> at exactly the same time. <laughs> yes, yeah, just stare at. No, it I mean just just play. having the like being able to see the cover art like that makes for like makes it look a lot better on camera too. Like it's just a, that it, is true. That is true because like I feel like. Whenever I put a cartridge inside a real Genesis, and I'm shooting video of it. Like mm-hmm. you see, like the characters like kind of peeking up over the slot. You just yeah. see like part of their head, like oh. Hello. Uh, try scroll up. There was a there was a two dollar donation from Aaron Welsh. You want to scroll up and see that? Oh, yep. Uh, two dollar. Uh, any thoughts on the state of Mister Development? Have you followed that at all? No, I no, I don't. I mean, it's a, it's, I've only messed around with mine a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's challenging to get, to get exactly how you want. And, but there's, there's a pretty good scene behind it though, right now, which is, is yeah, I purposely haven't looked at any of their code or anything because I don't want anybody to think that I've like looked at their code and used it or anything. Right. No, that, that makes total sense. Someone accused me of that on uh, Twitter a while back. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. Like given your business to, you know, kind of stay out of it. Yeah. It's kind of like how we, a lot of times we won't r- watch other people's like reviews or, or uh-huh. coverage of, of certain things because we don't want it to influence our, the things that we right. cover. But I mean, I don't to look at it too. I don't want to get influenced or anything. So right, right. Anyways, it's not fun using anybody else's code. I like to write everything myself. <laughs> I think that makes sense. I don't know how long this game is. I feel like how long? Um, I mean, how, I mean, did you play a lot of Genesis before this project? Who me? Yeah. N- no. <laughs> <laughs> The last time I played a Sonic CD was back in uh, 94. My friend had that. Was that that <laughs> CDX? It's the CD oh, built yeah, yeah. in. Mm-hmm. And he had a 32X plugged onto it also. <laughs> but yeah, that was the only, that was the last and only time I ever played uh, Sonic CD or any Genesis uh, CD game. <laughs> but you were, you were quite familiar with uh, at least the, the main CPU of the Master System because of ColecoVision and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the Z80, yeah. It still blows my mind that, like, it's it's so it's they're that similar, <laughs> like Coleco and then all these Sega consoles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, well, um, a lot of them used off the shelf the Coleco and the SG1000 use off the shelf parts, so it's kind of natural to, uh, that two systems so similar would be you know created. Mm. At least I think. I don't know, maybe Sega borrowed a little from the ColecoVision. Because <laughs> there is that two-in-one Dina system that Telegames used to sell. 
that had Coleco and SG-1000 on it with two slots. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And it had a little switch in one of the cartridge ports. When you plug a SG-1000 cartridge in, it would, like, switch all the mapping for it. Huh. So I, I, I definitely learned a lot about how the Genesis works, and I guess in general, like, how certain types of chips might be manufactured in general while making the episode because like the vdp like that was like kind of learning how that works to us to at least a, a layman's extent uh was interesting because like the later vdp versions of the vdp integrated like the sound functionality into the VDP. So my understanding is like the VDP like takes the functionality from numerous off the shelf parts, but integrates them into one chip. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, it's just the uh, cost reduction. So I just shove everything into one chip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, but oh, it was it was essentially cost reduction from the first model in terms of like. We need this function, this function, this function, this function, shove it all in the VDP. But then the VDP later evolved to include other functions that they were taking off the board. Yeah, well, that's not really a VDP in that case. That's just a, just an ASIC with a VDP in it at that point. I guess that's true. But I think they still call it VDP, right? Oh, dude. Well, maybe... I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I... Well, I don't know if it even says VDP on the board. I bet a lot of people really don't like the fact that the Genesis that we the bo the Genesis board that we show in a lot of our videos is a VA seven <laughs> because that's the that's like our least worthwhile system. It just happens it's, to be like the like the junk yeah, systems that we so, bought I mean, to open up why, that's for the why system. It's for... The, yeah, I've got a bunch of like systems that I just like leave open so I can shoot video inside them and without having to open my normal systems. And, well, like yeah, so I don't. I don't want to use the VA7, so I shoot inside it. But then I think, oh, some people are probably like, ew, you're using a bad Genesis. Why do I want to open my good Genesis? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much every video game system I have, the cover's off of it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously your uh, your uh, your needs are a bit different from mine <laughs> in terms of, uh, of, uh, of system use. Yeah, I got like... Way, wait, yeah, um, I got uh, systems here and they're all open right now i'm gonna switch games up back <laughs> whoa my, my man my screen is doing like such cool glitch outs look at that like it's getting caught in these like crazy loops that's awesome <laughs> working okay um one thing that i thought was interesting and for the record this is a feature that i personally do not care about at all i don't i don't use it on any other fpga system but i i was curious if there was a technical reason that there's no uh increased sprite limit option hey, i thought about adding and i just didn't have time to add it okay yeah I, I just wasn't sure if like there was a reason that it it would be more difficult on on the genesis or something no, it, it's possible. I just didn't have time to do it. Yeah. You probably have a list of things that you eventually want to get to anyway. I got a really big list. There's like 50, <laughs> 60 entries on this list of things that I'm, I oh, want to wow. you know, add and change. So I've been working through it. <laughs> Try looks like a Sega CD game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny the way it's working. I don't know why that's happening. Yeah, like my shirt is like three colors right now. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll, I'll play Batman and Robin after this. I'll grab the EverDrive after this. I'm just playing off of off my real cartridges right now. Was uh, was Batman and Robin, uh, did not... that, you recall if that ever called it, ca causing issues? Because didn't someone say that can, that game can cause problems with emulators? Uh... I feel like John said that. I mean, I, I, mean, I could be remembering it wrong. I mean, I, it's I, possible. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's a very impressive, interesting oh, yeah. game for sure. Very, very hard though. Yeah, but like the levels are so long 
and they look like the same thing just over and over again through the level, but that one thing they do looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they use the shadow and highlight mode. Uh, well, it's got it, it's got this really cool uh, perspective trick where it looks like the buildings are like you're kind of like looking down them at a slide angle, and I think it's just like this really complex per scan line. Yeah, that's really, that's really easy to do. But like, it, it looks awesome, and I don't oh, I does, think yeah. any other games that do it that way. Uh, Toy Story does it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the first level is just like that. Uh, Rad Racer eighty eight uh, sent. Uh, uh, I, I think that's uh, ten ninety reals. Uh, is it currently possible to develop a Saturn FPGA? Is it well, possible? Anything, it, anything's possible. Would I do it? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> it probably, probably would take a significant amount of time to figure it, it would, out. Yeah, it'd be, well, especially since you know emulators aren't even really a hundred percent yet. Right. Mm-hmm. But you you think that the Saturn would fit within a, within existing hardware? Well, you need a much bigger FPGA because it's got all those memory buses and it's got all of those CPUs and stuff in there. Yeah. I mean, do you think do you think a PlayStation would be way less difficult? Eh, probably. I don't know. I don't know anything about PlayStation. Uh, have you looked like uh, you've you've looked at like Neo Geo before, right? Yeah, Neo Geo didn't seem too terrible. It's just brute force. It's not really right. complicated. It's just absolute brute force. <laughs> it can, it can't do uh, it can't do any transparencies. I don't think, right? Everything's a sprite on the Neo Geo. Hmm. Oh, even the backgrounds? Like, there's... Even the backgrounds. Huh! Man, this is like... For some reason, I have a hard time right there. It's my favorite games on the system. Oh, 1090 Brazilian Real is 281 US. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I recall you saying that, like, N64... Like even if it were reverse engineered, like the it uses a particular type of RAM that would cause issues. I think you said. Well, so it'd be difficult to obtain. There's about three or four reasons. Uh huh. One of them is it's fast. It's like 90 megahertz in there, which is kind of fast for a FPGA. And then it's got tri-state buses everywhere in there, which kind of really sucks inside the chip itself and then mm-hmm. yeah it's got rd ram which is that uh, ram bus and so does like is that just like not really like uh, obtainable anymore is that kind yeah, of the problem ram is long obsolete and like you don't think that the games would function without the particular type of ram it was expecting well it'd be make life easier but you know <laughs> you have different kind of ram Mm-hmm. I turn up the game audio a little bit. Someone's saying, is there no game audio? I, I turn it up a little bit. If it's too if it's too loud, let me know. I don't think it, it, it shouldn't be. So do you have the same, or you, you updated to uh, 4.3. D- did you set your audio settings back to uh, what you have them set for the video, or did you leave them at default? Wait, what? Did, did you set your, when you updated to 4.3, did you uh, did you uh, set your audio settings back the way you had them? Or did you, uh, did you just, are you just using default audio? Right no, I, I have everything set the way that I, I have it. Oh yeah, and d- didn't you put in our folder, you put a, uh, a an screen. audio settings? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But I mean, yeah. the idea behind that, I mean, all that stuff is gonna, it's gonna change over time. I think that mm-hmm. that's like that is like the most important takeaway for a lot of this stuff, is that it's going to change. I mean, we say that as much in our in our video about it. You know, as as people they like hear things that <laughs> that I, like certainly I am not capable of hearing. Uh, yeah. Give feedback. I mean, it's gonna like that's. 
it's gonna well, I think the audio is pretty solid on the Genesis. It's just it needs the filtering to be exactly like some people are expecting it to sound right. Like. And right. It, exactly. It varies so much. It varies so much. I mean, who's to say what the one true sound is? It really right. isn't one. It's right. just exactly. like, you know, what, what you prefer. Right. I mean, the, the interesting thing is, even if you know, there might be some people who's like, oh, I don't I don't know if it's 100 percent like my, you know, model one, whatever. Well, no matter like no matter what, it's like a bazillion leagues better than a model two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, but obviously it's going to be so much more subjective. Like like I was saying earlier, I, I think I prefer for, for my own, I did not grow up with the Genesis tastes. Uh, I think I might actually prefer it. Yeah. Now that looks like a I like the clean sound myself. I mean, a little bit of low pass filtering is okay if you want to cut the high end out, but mm -hmm. I really like the clean sound because, I mean, you know, the video is so clean, so it shouldn't the sound be clean too. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, uh, there, there was a donation, uh, there was a uh, donation from, from Mitch B. Uh, thank you. And he was asking, it's already off the screen for me, but uh, he was asking, he said, X-Men has the worst dithering. Does, does the SG help? <laughs> well, I'll try that. I'll try that. You know, there's actually a dithering, it has a dither blending option. So it yeah. might help. Yeah. I, uh, I, was, I, was that something that you kind of decide on fairly late? Cause I don't think it was in the initial firmware we received. Uh, yeah, well, I wanted to add it for a while and, you know, I just didn't have time and so I eventually did add it and I was like, okay, you know, I think people will like this, so I mm. added it. It was it was pretty easy to add, so, you know, I threw it in there when I was doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, the slider is interesting. I, I'm not sure if I, like, because, like, the, the way that I, I would describe it is when the slider is its default setting on the left, like that's what looks best for in general patterns that are just like supposed to be like extra colors or something. Yeah. But then yeah, if I, you move it I, more toward the right, then those patterns kind of become raw dithering again. And then other patterns get blended. And I, I'm what's what exactly is is it like looking for pixel or is it on the left? My, my guess, my guess, and tell me if I'm rightish or wrong. <laughs> My guess is that when it's on the left, it's looking for for patterns that are one pixel apart. And I'm guessing when you move it toward the right, it starts looking instead for patterns that are more pixels apart. Is that? Well, it just yeah. kind of changes how it how it uh, compares and stuff. So in the future, that'll probably change. I'll may add more options. I want to add like the the rainbow option and stuff too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because people are like, oh, I want that in, you know, Sonic Waterfalls. Got to have my Sonic Waterfall. <laughs> now, I don't know if the DAC is going to support composite, but if if so, would it would it be like I, one of my favorite things about the NT Mini is that the uh, the the composite output like it does, it's not just like a generic composite like it looks very specifically like NES composite. Well, it's <laughs> better because it's an exact recreation of the NES's composite. Right, right. And that's that's what's amazing to me. Like, it's not just, just you know, some generic composite coding or whatever. You know, it's, yeah. it is very specific. Would, would the Genesis be the same situation well, where it's got like the rainbow crap and whatnot? Oh, it'd have that, yeah. The Genesis only outputs RGB, though. So it has like a Sony, usually, uh, converter chip in there that generates the composite. Okay, that's that's what I was guessing. That's what well, I was Super guessing. Nintendo so, does that, too. You know, that's pretty common. No. no. <laughs> oh, we got $10 from Craig Wan. Thank you. Uh, he says, I want to give my thanks to Kevtris. Awesome job, jo awesome job on the Mega SG. My games never looked and sounded so good. I look forward to seeing many more consoles from you in the future. Rock on, brother. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, you know, what he was saying there, like, it never looked and sounded so good. Like, kind of what you, I mean, I think we got distracted, but what you were saying earlier about the... Uh, 
you know, Jeez, if, it, if it looks, you know, so clean, like the audio should be clean too. And 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 I, I think that's a good point because it's it's important that you offer the tools to make the audio sound dirtier and more like people remember it, etc. But I, I'm, I'm kind of with you there because... You know, on one hand, yes, it's supposed to be a a recreation. But on the other hand, I also think there's an argument to be made that part of the intent is also to improve, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Well, I really want to make it sound just like, you know, the filters on a on like a Model 1 and 2 and all of that fun stuff. And I was thinking about having um, presets, so if you want to just click a oh. button. I want it to sound like a Model 1, click it, or I want, you know, clean sound or whatever. I saw there's um, another donation as well. Just so you know, just so you have that in your mind. Oh, I'm, I'm um, going to try the X-Men. I'm going to... Oh, it's, it must be coming up. Uh, no, y it's just... Yingu Gemini? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, oh, I missed it. Uh, Five dollars. Thank you. Uh, Kempfers, have you considered adding an audio filter or other options to make it sound or play like an at games console? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, I think you should make a filter to make it sound like the Dreamcast Sega Smash Pack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, actually, you could probably achieve that by doing one of the uh, different sine waves oh maybe so yeah i bet you could i bet you could get pretty close with that well i have, have to do weird stuff on the audio on these systems uh i, I saw someone says a dither is a dither feature on i'm gonna try the dither right now i mean this this like this right here doesn't look like it's too too bad really no uh also there was another five dollar Christopher Hamilton, Kempfers, do you have any plans in the future to release your Intellivision core for the NT Mini? Yeah, I kind of wanted to do that. I need to get that converted over. I was thinking about doing that. Was that made after the NT Mini or before? No, the Intellivision core, I think I made it around 2010. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's really old. It supports everything. It supports you know, the ECS. It supports the speech synthesizer. Like homebrew ROMs, this supports everything. Isn't this the game that has some sort of weird? You have to reset the like, game to beat it. Yeah. Um, I, I I've I've not played this game very much. I I consider it one of those later generation uh, Genesis games where the sound is really bad on it. It's, it, it doesn't, for, doesn't for, visually it doesn't look like a later generation game. It looks kind of lame, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of agree with you. I mean, it looks like it's, I don't know. This is just something that. Well, who released it? Uh, Sega, I believe, published it. Well, so, well, Sega published like every single game, just about it seems on this system. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely get the impression they had like a lot of oh. a lot of maybe direct involvement. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, with, you know, it's, like maybe more so than like Nintendo, for example. Oh, games. definitely. You know, I think it's really funny. There's this game called uh, Awesome Possum. Yep. Yeah. Kicks oh, back yeah. Chino's butt, and it's literally just a Sonic clone on the <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> Only Sonic with a bad attitude and bad voice acting. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure if I can get through here. Uh, I I think there was a was yeah. There it, was, was a, there was another color? donation. It didn't pop up on my screen though. Um, let me go to, to the uh, let me go to Streamlabs really. Yeah, quick. you should have that open just in case. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me pause this here. Oh, you can change character. That's kind of cool. I've not, I've, I haven't played this game very much. I remember renting it and be like, uh, <laughs> I'd rather just play one of the games I have. But yeah, this one you do have to you have to reset to uh, to get the real ending or something like that. Huh. Um. 
Oh, well, that's maybe that's why. That was my personal YouTube. Oh, uh, there's 541 people. What? Stream now, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of nuts. Um, hang on. I I apologize. I, I'm gonna, no, I'm, gonna I'm gonna switch games anyways. Um, for for Mega or, or for Master System stuff, um, mm-hmm. would it? No, we be, had everything there. That we, we so, something interesting that I I learned uh, while making the video is that the the difference between how Master System like master system borders is whether a game scrolls horizontally or not, or whether a, that screen of that game can scroll horizontally. Like it, it, the border has, I think eight more pixels on the left side. If it, if it scrolls horizontally. Interesting. That's yeah. So, huh? What now? What about the eight (laughs) pixels on master system? Yeah, I I, th- I don't know if it's eight pixels, but like there's, I think it it's is. eight pixels. It is. Yeah. It, you can you can clip the left side of the screen on the master system, so games that scroll horizontally are usually, um, so sprites can come out of the screen without them just appearing. Right. I think. Right. Right. So, well, I think the the game automatically. I'm gonna play some time cr- the, the game automatically crops it with like a colored board. Or in yeah. some cases, that color might be black anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, is is it possible for the Mega SG to identify that and like automatically crop it, or it could? Actually, let me put that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> because like it, I wonder if it could. Is there is there a reason that the Master System Core has a cropping? tool instead of just automatic cropping oh I, I don't know that's just kind of the way it was i mean i can i can add the auto cropping here i'm gonna put it on the list <laughs> i mean i i, I mean it's not, that, that's not necessarily a, a complaint or criticism but i i i was just curious if there was like a technical reason for it um like if if maybe maybe master system games are more inconsistent with how that or how the borders are drawn than I think I don't know. Well, I don't know. Some of them just like to turn that feature on and off. You know, the NES has that exact same feature. Is it? Are you like the NT Mini? You mean? Yeah. Well, the NES in general has that same cropping oh. feature. Like you see it on you know oh, Super yeah. Mario Three is a really good example. Yeah. It, keeps it on all the time right 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 but it usually on the nes doesn't like it's not like that colored border they usually see on it's, the it's yeah it's, it's just kind of like a, it almost looks like glitchy or whatever but on the... so so in time soldiers is the level <laughs> the levels that you go to are they like random yes okay that's what i thought like i couldn't like i played the game for probably like 20 minutes and i couldn't I couldn't figure out like what the progression was. <laughs> yeah, it's it's random. Um, I don't know what I have my scaling sent to on here. Um, this is kind of like a random thing. Like I know, like like the system is definitely uh, made to interact with the uh, with the M30 controller specifically. Is this something that would have to be uh, changed in the firmware for the controller? Is or would the the Mega SG be able to do this? Where they you can uh, where you could assign what the shoulder buttons. Uh, what button they correlate to? I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, it's okay. Like, well, then, th- then in that case, it probably if if you don't know, then it's probably it's probably like on the controller side. the controller firmware. Because I I can't remember if I I I think I tested it on my real Genesis because like the the R button is always is, is C is C is yeah a C oh, button, which is on the, on the controller itself. Yeah, the the shoulder buttons just double up as uh, C and the X buttons. Right, 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 right. So that's that's a con- that's hardwired into the that's controller, the not the Mega SG. Yes, yes. Can the can the Mega SG like take control of the control? I don't the controller, think so. so to speak. I don't think so. Because what what what's interesting to me is that the menu button on the controller, uh, no no matter what you set your hotkeys to. 
the um the the menu button always goes to the menu. So like that's not so that you're reading some sort of input on the Mega SG that is specifically this is the menu input and this is not like start plus down plus C or whatever, you know? Huh. Yeah, I, I I mean I don't know how how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at it. we got we got King Ghidorah here. Oh yeah. Three heads are better than one. Yeah. You, you had this game as a kid, you said, right? I did, yes. Did you ever beat it? No, no, no. I mean it doesn't seem that hard. I mean with two but players. I have no it's concept doable. of how long it is. Yeah. But with two players, it's probably could do could be all right, I guess. So when when did, when would you say you kind of started the project? Um, I'm not hundred percent sure. There's not really a really good defined starting point. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you probably had an yeah. idea that you could be when doing it. When the Super NT ended, you know, I pretty much started on the DAC and this. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm very interested in the in the DAC. Like I, I I'm excited that it's still coming because I think a lot of people weren't sure uh -huh. after, after a while. Like I think that's but seeing that uh, the uh, listing in the um, in the manual, I'm like, oh, that's that's it's such a relief to see that it's still coming. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I beat Equinox on the Super NT using <laughs> DAC. Oh, really? <laughs> on a PPM, yeah. Oh, well, there there you go. That's... Yeah, I mean, it's... That's cool. It's I mean... real. <laughs> <laughs> um... There is something to be said for using a CRT, but, you know, flat screen's pretty darn good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but, but it's, it's uh, even better to have an option to, you know, to be able to use whichever one... I mean, you might feel like using one one day and something else the next day. Um, um, let's see here. The uh, I'm gonna save these. Yeah, you know, speaking of of the DAC, uh, I don't I don't know if 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 you know this, but <laughs> something I discovered. Um, I think it was when I was working on the Retro Tink episode. I I bought like Corey's got one of those like crappy, uh, you know composite and S video to HDMI boxes. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was finally time that I bought one too, just, you know, for ease of being able to show how crappy those kinds of things are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when I was working on the retro take episode, like I bought one to like make a comparison. And what was interesting was uh, the, the, uh, the Genesis was black and white on it. And I was like really frustrated at first because I'm like, oh, how am I going to make this comparison? And I asked uh, Steve Kulov from HD Retrovision. Uh, and he said, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. He said, like, the Genesis's chroma signal is so bad that some <laughs> video processors, like, literally can't even lock onto the chroma. <laughs> well, if, I, if it was in PAL mode and you had an NTSC console, it would do the same thing too. Right, but it was it was NTSC mode because I I, I mean I was I did the, I did the same test with an NES and it was oh and it, it worked was, there it worked I wouldn't it wasn't good but it worked <laughs> you know uh, but yeah it it was it was black and white uh, whereas it was you know it was it was in color on the retro tank it was in color on the frame meister and um uh I yeah so a bit, a bit like i mean this. some people it's are so in short. love with the genesis's composite because of the dithering tricks that it lets you do but the reality is it is on a technical level a really poor composite thing <laughs> it's just one that that people happen to do some interesting things with um also, while, while you're playing this, unpopular opinion, I think Sega's Disney games are more interesting than Sonic. 
Well, they did a really good job on all the Disney games. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Unlike, unlike most licensed things, you know, they made them really good. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I kind of like the the more m- measured pace of them compared to the Sonic games. Like, I feel like Sonic, like, I like fast platformers. I mean, you know, even like, you know, Mario and Donkey Kong Country, those, those can be pretty fast too. But... Uh, like Sonic is, it's, it's a little too fast for my taste. Yeah, I think Sonic, they, um, you know, they tried to push it as, oh, it's faster than Mario. Well, that doesn't make it better than Mario <laughs> because it's faster. It's a good game. Don't get me wrong. I like yeah. games, but I think it's kind of just hilarious that, you know, that's their, well, that was their whole marketing thing. It doesn't, you know? yeah, it doesn't make it better just because he's faster. <laughs> yeah, you know, the slap and the TV onto the back of a dragster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot how easy or how short the easy, the practice mode is on this. I mean, it's like three quick levels, basically. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's funny that like, you know, they, they're like comparing Mario Kart and like making that look like it's slow and crappy. I'm like, well, Super Monaco GP is 30 frames per second. <laughs> yeah, it's funny on the Mickey Mouse games. You know, you're not supposed to have lives on these games because Mickey can never die. Oh, it's got to be tries. How many tries you got? <laughs> I always found that really amusing. <laughs> it's interesting that, uh, that, uh, the Genesis has the second, only the second game in the Magical Quest series. You know, it's got Great Circus Mystery, but all the others are only on Super Nintendo. <laughs> um, I saw somebody, I wonder what the difference between, oh, this is like a Smash Pack and the 1.1. 1. 1. I wonder what the difference is. I wonder if there's different voice samples. The, in the room. There was, I, I, I'm not sure, 4.3 fixed it because i know i reported the issue uh and i i don't know if this this had an impact on any other games but like i think controller port 2 was reading an right. input that, whether there was fixed. anything or that is fixed so you can yeah. choose the valkyrie and gar or uh, gauntlet for now right as far as far as i know yes i believe because i think that was said in the release notes for it ah uh, one point is just a later release is that just uh I wonder if he has anything different about it, but you know what? I'll try. I'll, I'll, I will be able to tell probably with this one. This is one you, I... uh, you, you don't, I, I think you, you don't have like the best opinions about Golden Axe 2 and 3. Is that, am I remembering yeah, I don't, that I don't, I don't care for 2 and 3, but I, I love the first one. The, I never, there... two I and... the first one, let alone 2 or 3. Oh, wait, <laughs> you, you, wait, you love 2 and 3 or, or? I've never played any of them. Uh, the first, <laughs> the first one is excellent. I think the 2 and 3 just... I don't know. They just they feel like a lot of Genesis games from that period where they're they they feel rushed and the graphics are just I don't know. They're they're just like really like murky looking, I guess is a good way to put it. Kind of look, yeah. Well, they haven't really hit their stride yet, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, I this one I think is great. I think the Golden Axe one just I don't know. It, probably because this one's based on an arcade game and the other ones were original oh, for I the system. Original. Yeah, I mean, there was one in the arcade, but that was... <laughs> like, I mean, th- there was a two in, in the arcade, but that was Revenge of Death Adder, which never got a port to anything. And it's like, you can play it three players. It's pretty cool. Now, speaking of murky-looking later Genesis games, I don't know if it was really a later game, but like the... Uh, World of Illusion is like uh, like it, like the, the darkest color in that game is like really like a very middle gray <laughs> like it's a very washed out looking game yeah I mean like I, I think I feel like I've streamed that before and people thought like my settings were wrong or something because it was like so washed out looking it's like nope <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's kind of like a lot of the 3DO games. They're like super dark <laughs> mm. for some reason. I don't know why, but you know, like you put an RGB mod on there, and you're like, is this mod broken? Because it <laughs> looks so terrible, but no, that's what it's supposed to look like. 
Uh, Doug uh, Gulich. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> donated five dollars. Seven wants me to Thank play Splat Splatterhouse two or three. And uh, he also says, "What was harder, reverse engineer Genesis or Super Nintendo, and why?" Well, they both have their hard parts, so you know. Genesis, obviously, the 68K was pretty difficult because I wanted like a perfect 68K, which I did get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super Nintendo, the um, DMAs was probably pretty hard. Yeah, the Super Nintendo even has blast processing. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you see uh, John Linneman's uh, blast processing video? Uh, yeah, I think I did actually. And it, and it, like, it's, it's a real thing. It's just not what Sega marketing made it out to be. And it was a thing that no one ever used because it was so difficult. <laughs> no, it's not true. It's just the DMA engine. Every game uses it. Well, it was like a specific, it was a specific, like color function that like apparently what this marketing exec saw is like oh that sounds cool and it, <laughs> that's where the like, name it, came from yeah but it like the specific function that i think they were talking about was something that can do but they just never did because it was like i it was like change it was like this really complicated timing thing so that you could change the color on like a per scan the color palette either on like a per scan line or per per pixel it's using, basis it's using the dma to write a bitmap to the screen yeah. i try mm, there's there's yeah. looks like a donation that shows up just on oh the there was another uh and that, even, that does work it, on it, the fm one dollar thank you oh. is there a possibility for new crt tv made exclusively for retro gaming i mean I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I, I forget who it was that we talked to. Or like, we had, we asked a similar question, you know, someone a little more, you know, on the, the technical side of things. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, that is such a complicated manufacturing pipeline, I think, to make for such a niche purpose. I think, I think the better route to take is to, Make systems like yeah. the Mega SG. Yeah, I mean, get get th make create things that will approximate the experience, uh, and you know, and that might involve more filtering and 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 stuff to really get it there. But I think the other complicated thing is that CRT filters don't look. I mean, they look good, like if you're just playing on your own but if you're like recording streaming like that kind of stuff doesn't translate over the web because people are looking at it on a modern tv and that's why they don't have scan lines on here because they look bad when when scaled differently yeah you really need a lot higher resolution than 1080p if you want to simulate like an exact crt look there's just not enough pixels to do it mm -hmm. uh, mario uh 64 gave a dollar nine nine Thanks for the live stream, guys, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, uh, we're, we're I, almost six hundred people. Six hundred people would be. Oh, I mean, this is oh, this is definitely would, the the record right now, but. But that would be even more of a record. That would yeah. be crazy if we could get six hundred people. <laughs> I, yeah, that that definitely exceeds expectations. <laughs> um. Uh, Splatterhouse. I, I'm not sure what resolution this game is running in. It, it looks to me like it's 320. It looks like the pixels are skinny, I think. You can tell by the pixels. You see, he, he, he sees a lot of stuff that, like, I can... Yeah, if, I mean... He if, sees if stuff you're, that, I'm like, what? <laughs> I always have to ask him, like, what, what do you think this is? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the pixels in 320... Like if you're if you're using a four three aspect ratio, three twenty pixel wide games are going to have skinnier pixels, and two fifty six wide games are going to have fatter pixels. And that was you know I was I was kind of joking with you in the email when I asked if you could be on here. Uh, you know I I thought it was funny because I was like when I was giving feedback, and it was you know getting passed on to you obviously, like I was I was making a lot of comments about. Uh, 
Oh, I hold on. There's a uh, JD with two dollars. Uh, uh, only thing holding me back from buying some kind of systems is the ability to dump ROMs off card, so I don't need to use the card anymore. What are the chances of this happening? Also, if Game Boy something carts dying, I didn't catch it all. Uh, I can look at the one of the streamlabs. Um, there, there was there was some there was some some sort of censoring on the uh, on the uh, at least on the view on the stream. Yeah, uh, let's see. It seems to like be censoring censoring analog. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what it's that's what it's censoring. I have no idea. Uh, I no, I don't know why I would do that. It's like that's got to be a Streamlabs thing. I wonder if I can change that. I'll have to do that after. Uh, it's if analog work, huh? What's that? <laughs> I said it's a dirty word, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just it's. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why <laughs> why it would do the whole word at that at that point but uh it says if analog game boy will uh will game save to the system in case the cart battery dies oh i mean that's i mean is is game boy supported on the it's the, on the nt mini uh, yeah on the nt mini yeah. that's what i that's what i thought and game boy game boy color are on the nt mini yeah uh i mean i guess uh I mean, with all those, you know, like the save files save to the SD card, but that is. Uh, would yeah. you would you be able to do? Would it be possible to do that while running a, a game off a cartridge on any of these systems? To do what? To save the save to, game on it? Yeah, I mean, it would have to. It have to be a separate process, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, you know, the um, NT Mini does that for the. With the you know the copy nest thing and the bob, mm -hmm. it'll it can mm -hmm. back that stuff up. Right, right, right. But could it do it in like real time playing the game? Well, it's kind of hard when the game is using the same RAM chip. Right. Yeah. That's well, you mean you could copy the RAM contents onto another RAM chip in the system, and then you'll play the game off of there and save and load that. Yeah, but it, that, and that's what I'm saying though. It would be a like a separate function, like a separate read write. Yeah, it'd be separate. Um, there was another five dollar from Blind Label. Thank you. Uh, w asking, would it ever be possible to see a PS One FPGA with disc drive, or even Saturn or Dreamcast? I don't think a disc drive has anything to do with whether an FPGA would be possible. Right. I mean, I'm just assuming that, like, designing a FPGA system that uses a disc drive that that's just like it gives a lot more moving parts eventually for the long term i guess yeah it would see wear and tear over the long term but i'm sure there's ways around to around it i mean i guess if you had like something where it was you know you could remove a drive and put a new one in very easily or something like that for the long term but that's when i think about you know if if there are if there is like a like a cd based system in the future an analog's future that if uh you know just having a as cd rom adds like a whole other layer to what you got to think about i guess right um, oh yeah. another five dollars this <laughs> was from uh scott f wow thank you uh this is for Kevtris in the super nt episode you stated oh i was scrolling you say that 32-bit gen would be the highest FPGA tech could go. Any amendments on that prediction when you're on? Nah, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what is the? I'm gonna play Socket. That's a, a game that has a really good soundtrack, I guess. That. Oh well, yeah, where did John was talking about the, it? Who said that? It's, I feel like that was in. Uh, wasn't wasn't that? Uh, wasn't that in GameSack's uh, Tude era video? Yeah, probably. Um, there it is. Play some socket. <laughs> socket, Mr. Socket. Socket to me. <laughs> oh wow! Here's uh, Mario Triple O sixty four again. 
$49.99. Thank you. $49.99. Yeah, $49. Well, well, I can't <laughs> words. Uh, does Captures expect to be able to fix the inability to use the enhanced soundtrack disc when playing pure solar? I thought you had gotten that to work. Yeah, I mean, I worked it with my Model 1. Didn't uh, didn't Joe have trouble with that though? I don't know if that was based on earlier firmware or something though. Yeah, I I don't know. I I'm pretty sure I got it working with my on my Model One. I'll put it on the list to check. Do you still have dither blending on? Like the the background pattern behavior is that is it is it dither blending off? I'd be curious to see what it would do with those. I can uh, not do it right now. Those, I, 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 uh, I have comb, it off. Comb but... tooth layers. That's a weird dither pattern. Is that what it's called? Comb so, tooth layers. Well, I mean, I I don't know what else are you gonna call it. That's what it looks like. So you found that the the dither blending. You know, you just kind of look where. It, to just below where it fixes what you want it to? I guess. Like, it looks like this game's using... Like, uh, the transparency effects are definitely trickier to get. Yeah, because, right. I mean, you see it, like, once... There's, like, certain things. Like, once my character goes right. behind it, you see it a little bit more. Would it be possible to, like, for example, only apply dither blending to, like, the parallax... Like the layer behind instead of the foreground layer because that's that's the only part that like it's when those planes move across each other when they're trying to do the transparency stuff that it kind of doesn't work as well but like for just blending color it works really good. Yeah, it just depends. Like, um, I just wasn't sure if this is like a dip by those elements. I'll stuff. probably end up tweaking it some more when I get some time. Mm -hmm. I think I think it works best in games like like the Virgin Games stuff, uh, that you know, just like Aladdin, for example. Oh, we got we got two we got two A's. I'm guessing those are Aust Australian dollars. Uh, uh, <laughs> what console could be fit in today's largest FPGAs? Well, I mean, I think you were saying like. Well, you could probably fit a PlayStation 3 in there. It's not going to run full speed, but you know, <laughs> the largest FPGA you can buy costs something like $40,000. Oh. Literally. I mean, I'm not joking on that. Wow. That's, that's crazy. But, uh. you know, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what the most expensive, biggest FPGA that you could easily get. <laughs> If you really want to know what the most expensive FPGA is, $88,000. <laughs> one. One part. Oh, for... Wow. Jeez. <laughs> like, you know, what would... I mean, would... Yeah, what, what do you think that's being used for? Would the application of that be like for creating some functionality for a project that just does not exist in, in a off the shelf part or would it be used for like prototyping a chip that you would like to manufacture that that's probably what it's for it's got 3.8 million logic cells and the <laughs> one nt mini's got forty nine thousand. or Jeez. sorry that msg and the super nt so you know a little slight difference there <laughs> But the but even if you have the space for it, Easy. it's still Got bound by a certain certain it's, speed. You're bound by speed a speed limit, pretty much. Mm -hmm. There's a another ten dollar from Craig Wan. Thank you. Jeez. I uh, think the other so, types of things they use those for is like you know MRI scanners for the image uh, processing and stuff like that. You know where they can really you know you know eighty eight thousand dollars is a lot of money but when you're talking something like that it's not very much right yeah yeah i mean you you probably make that up with one scan <laughs> yeah yeah well, that's like when you go and get one of those done it's so expensive you know you gotta basically pay for the for the <laughs> time that you're using on it yeah. but at that point i don't know why you well i mean i guess it's not like they're just like making bazillions of those because i mean you're only selling them to you know medical facility so i don't know if it's worth like making 
a basic part. Yeah, it isn't. You know, if you're only going to sell a couple thousand of them, it's, you know, it's definitely not. Mm -hmm. You know, tape out on something like that's going to be, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. And if you're only going to make a thousand of them, it's just not worth it. Uh, the $10 from Craig, Craig Wan said, Hey, Captors, if, and I do mean if you decide to do N64, a reissue of the NT Mini or any handhelds, what will be some of the challenges you will face in the process? Otherwise, here's to a perfect Sunday. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't comment about anything business related like that. Oh, like but, in terms uh, of like doing a reissue or something like that. Like that's, that yeah, is, I, I, like, yeah. I, that's... I can't comment on any future or current plans. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll probably find out by October, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if things have been, I, when, it's when been was pretty the... consistent. I mean, I, 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 I enjoy how it's like an annual event at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it feels like, <laughs> You know, it's, it's kind of fun, like, at least from our perspective, because we're dealing with, like, the new hardware and the embargo and stuff. And, like, it makes it feel like this, like, big event that, like, you know, in, in the normal gaming world, you know, there's, there's new games and stuff coming out all the time. And, like, people were dealing with embargoes and stuff like that every day. And, like, for us, it's, like, the one time of the year where it's, like, oh, everyone's going to be releasing their videos on the same day, and it's very <laughs> exciting. I mean, it's so dumb that people are, like, hmm, uh, all of a sudden, there's 10 YouTubers releasing a video on the same thing at the same time. Very suspicious. It's, like, <laughs> it's, like. I mean, that's how things are, have like always that. Been. It's, like. Yes, we weren't allowed to release a video until this time. That doesn't mean it's not our own objective assessment that no one looked at except ourselves before releasing it. <laughs> uh, I think there was another donation I missed. Uh, uh, from uh... G Gabriel Bur Burkhart with $1.99. Thanks for all that you do, guys. Thank you. Uh, what am I playing now? We're going to play some, uh, play some Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man. Uh, how how how'd you how'd you feel I, about I socket? Of them. What's that? How, how how'd you feel about socket? That seems okay. <clears throat> um, uh, when you were playing Splatterhouse, though, remind me that um, I, I was looking for an example. I mean, I didn't actually show the the resolution change, but I uh, I was looking up uh, an example of a game. They had like a mixture of 240p and or not 240p, uh, 256 wide and 320 wide. And it sounded like Splatterhouse gameplay is um, 320 or no 256, but I think everything else like cutscenes and stuff is 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 320. Um, which I thought was I thought was interesting. When you added the function to the scaler to identify to like set 320 and 256 separately, did you that was this was the system already capable of identifying that difference, or did you have to like code that in before that function would work? Um, well, it was pretty much you know in there, you know, I can have like eight separate resolutions like that now. Oh, okay. Just in case, but yeah, right now it's just the two, two fifty six and three twenty. Um, speaking of resolution, you know, again, not something I care about whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but I like considering, like you know, four eighty is like barely used. Like, have you thought about like doing anything like a bob or anything like that to? Or just a line, just even a more basic line doubling, or is it just like for 480i? It's like you two, know, two the, games, <laughs> like two games. It's like you know, like, have it in there. It does. It does uh, combing. Oh, it does. The, oh, okay. So you, it's just the the that. Okay, so I, I that I wasn't sh sure if that was like a conscious choice. Oh, or if that's yeah. just 
Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it might. I thought that might just be what it spat out by default without like any input from you. Oh no, no. If if I did it without any input from me, it would be two forty p going in, and it would flicker up and down. Oh, okay. So it would bob. It would bob by default. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So and it looks it looks really horrible on Genesis games, or at least on the like the two that use it. Because the pixel content is different, so it looks like it's vibrating up and down, and it's like unplayable. Yeah, it is really strange. Like it, it's so someone, like every like play things Roy are Rash like too. I play Roy Rash too. There uh, were there were two I, I think there were two more two donations that I they aren't in the chat. I I don't uh, know. If they, one of them was uh, from a, a Mel site, a two dollars who said uh, got my. My Life in Gaming t-shirt this week, and it's super comfy. Well, thank you. You're oh. probably the, the fifth person to, to, to buy one. <laughs> uh, and there another one that's from, uh, from uh, Carnivore, Car- Carnivore Bear. Car- Carnivore Bear. Uh, it was another two, two, I assume, Australian dollars. It says, what console is the limit of current FPGA speeds? Um, I mean, we've kind of i guess I know, it's, it depends on what you're doing yeah i mean it just comes down to and you know, how much time you have i guess really i mean too. like what what one i mean one thing you said for example is you know n64 is relatively fast so you it would be you don't know if it would run at full speed even wait a second that is not whoa what, well, hang what? on hang on maybe no. before that that it's like in, insane that's like insane but hang on really quick uh, Scott F with two dollars says the try boat jangles or Zaxby's and Corey Skyline versus Gold Star. That is, that is the most important question all night. Yeah, and the answer is Bojangles, but I also like Zaxby's. Uh, I would say I'd probably say Skyline over Sky, Gold Star, but I would say Dixie Chili over both of them. But I like Gold Star. I that, I mean I don't know how that that could is that, is that could even be. real? I yeah. don't know if this is real. <laughs> yeah, from JF. That's like I don't I, like I can't imagine. Is that real? If that is real, then holy smokes, thank you. If that is another uh, denomination of currency, also thank you. <laughs> and it, with that, I mean JF will be picking all the games I'll be playing for us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Midnight cow! Resistance, so when yeah. you hear that level two music, you 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 got it, man. Jeez, you, thank you. <laughs> I can't. You, you got that. Uh, let's see. I, I I'm I'm someone's someone's talking about jail bars, so I I think I need to add a jail bar setting so you can turn those on if you're really you really want. You up. should. Holy cow! Okay, we're, I'm gonna the playing. jail bars setting. Uh, Hang on, what am I looking for? I, I can't even think straight after that donation. He got me. Here we go. JF is, say, is, is saying in the uh, in the chat, oops, put in a few extra zeros. I don't know if he like actually made that was a mistake. That's not that's not for real, right? I mean. <laughs> he, sa- he says, let's go have to charge back 495 of that, boys. I, 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 I mean, you... you you got it if that is the case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't like. How do you even do? I don't know how that happens. He says it's a genuine mistake. We'll still play whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> uh, I can jump in a little bit. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know how you do let, like let a chargeback. Yeah, if you can take care of that on your end, if you need, if you need our involvement. Yeah, because that's for, that's for insane. fixing that's... that. Let us let us let us know. We we will we will make that right. <laughs> yeah. Make sure make sure you got the is uh, is the sound up good enough? Yeah, uh, yeah, for, it's, it's for up. People to hear the to hear the music. Yeah. Uh, Mitch B. Oh, I was like looking up the chat. It says, are you working on a on a core for the Neo Geo? I mean, this uh, that's gotta get frustrating. I mean, do you feel like everyone's everyone's always asking you like what's gonna be next? <laughs> yeah, I can't say what's gonna be next. Obviously. Well, I mean, it's like I said, Genesis was obvious. 
Like, whatever's next will definitely be a surprise because it's not like there's a lot of good choices, but it's not obvious like what the next right one would be. Oh, we got another donation from a carnivore bear. You Thank read you. It? Thank you. Is, uh, is OG Xbox PS2 GameCube totally off limits tech wise with current FPGAs or possible but just incredibly hard to implement? I think well, you can't already answer that. It's going to be possible, but, you know, I probably. Not very possible. Or practical. Not Well, that's the thing. It's not practical, I guess, is what you could say. Yeah. I mean, do you think that, like, to do something like that, you would probably have to put a team together or something like that? Oh, it would definitely be a team effort, you know, because yeah. you've got you know, all those parts. You have to do, like, the CPU, the, the GPU, and, you know, all the other stuff. Would, for a, for a system like that, would it be more feasible to to track to manufacture the parts rather than do an FPGA well you know like something like the original Xbox is basically just a PC so you'd probably start with a PC and you know modify it from there I would think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love the music in this game. Is uh, was done by Hitoshi Sakamoto. The, uh, the oh, I mean, was not, it really? not, not not the original version, but he just he did the music for this version. And this the the music in this version is better than than the arcade version. Is it the same composition though? Yeah. So he he just re re engineered the the compositions. He didn't write it. Right. That's interesting, though. Like, it's so interesting that he did Gauntlet Four as well because, um, like, it has it just has a very unique sound, like for the Genesis. Like, so, like, I, I never would have like necessarily pegged him as someone who like really got the the Genesis sound hardware because I didn't know he was even making music on the Genesis for one, mm -hmm. but uh, until more recently. But uh, yeah, I mean that's 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 very interesting. Thank you. This uh, this is a pretty awesome game. Um, someone, someone asked someone... if I played around with the Mister. No, I choose not to because I don't want to, you know, be accused of stealing anything or whatever mm -hmm. but you th like after you're all finished with development you might mess around with it yeah i might i mean like i said someone accused me of uh using the mister's uh genesis uh project on twitter Ugh. which i thought was pretty funny Um, there goes my gun. Actually, it was the guy that wrote it, I think. Someone, that's what someone was telling me who that was, because I don't know, you know who, who it was. But uh, that's fine. Um, I, 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 I it scrolled back, it scrolled up, so I, I lost who said it, but someone, someone um, said, you know, people are asking about systems that already have, like, digital mods. And, uh, you know, I guess one of the interesting things about, I mean, this this might be more common than I realize, but like the Genesis and I believe the Saturn as well, like the digital to analog conversion happens, I guess, inside the VDP. Yeah, that's true. It does. So, that's in other words, you would you would have to replace the entire VDP to create an HDMI mod for this system. Yeah, which, I don't know how I get it. Which I think is essentially what you did for the high-def NES, but the difference is the complexity of replacing a Genesis VDP is way more. Well, yeah, on the NES, it still uses the existing... Um, it still uses the existing PPU on the high-def... If you don't right, have... but you you add like something on top that kind of controls it, I guess. Or, That's or... true. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, there was uh, four nine nine from Sean Quinn. Try are you caught up with your Marvel movies <laughs> that you'll be able to jump into the new Avengers movie in theater? Uh it's it's possible. 
Uh, I think I've only got four movies to go. Yeah. Uh, but then I would also have to see Captain Marvel. I mean, maybe that'll be in like the the cheap theater by then. If I were, if I were, I would be caught up around the time uh, the end game comes to theaters. Yeah. It, by, go, going by the, the current rate of, uh, of getting through them. Like two a doing. week. Roughly. Uh, Craig Wan asks, I don't know a Super NT yet, but does it do dither blending? It, it, it doesn't. I don't know. Would you consider adding that? I mean, I, it's, I feel like that's not a prevailing characteristic on Super I Nintendo. I could add it, but there's really not that many games that have dithering on the Super Nintendo. That's yeah, one thing but, I really noticed on the Genesis. There's a lot more dithering. Uh, because, because the Super Nintendo has a transparency function that and it has uh, more colors it can uh sean quinn asks with another 499 also if you've seen thor ragnarok how did you like it i love that movie even the opening scene is great uh i think i think that's the next one uh I'm pretty sure that that should... I, the, the next the yes next that two, is the next one I, I i've been double featuring them on thursday nights uh and it, i think next is thor ragnarok and black panther yeah uh, um, Thor Ragnarok's my favorite as well. So, oh, my dog looking forward to it. Jump to I, its I hear, death. I hear, oh, it's back. I hear good things. <laughs> What's that? I said, I said, looking forward to it. I hear good things. <laughs> <laughs> what game is this? Uh, this is Shadow this... Dancer. Oh, okay. Which is, it's a Shinobi game. Yeah. Oh, I but just it's... Like... And that the, I was just laughing at the wolf there just launched himself right in the <laughs> hole in it open. <laughs> and then drops down from the sky. Yeah, yeah. So in Japan, there's like uh, Revenge of Shinobi and Shinobi 3 are like branded as Super Shinobi. Yeah. Right? And this is not a Super Shinobi game, but it's still a Shinobi game. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, this is one this... plays a lot more like, like the first game. Yeah. Yeah, which I like the first game. I haven't beaten it yet, though. I mean, it's kind of hard, but not too. I don't think it's too bad. I mean, this. I mean, this does look good. I mean, is it is it an expensive game? I I, I, I feel like I'm. I don't know if I've ever seen it. I I don't know how ex if it's expensive, honestly. I know that's not a very. We've got we've got six hundred and eight viewers, by the way. Wow, we have, no, mine says six hundred and thirteen. Whew. That is that is a record. I saw six twenty one earlier. Oh man. Yeah, I, looking back, I, I see the, the six twenty three even. So on this the bonus stage, you can get right over here and hit them all. It's like a, a cheap way to do it. Oh, we got a ten dollar donation from Vanessa Palmer. Thank you. Uh, here, here's another if, <laughs> if, and I mean if, a second Saturday were done or attempted, would two individual FPGAs be needed or would it be possible for one solid or powerful FPGA to do both processors of the Saturn, theoretically? Well, you could put it all onto one FPGA. You, the problem is you need all that memory, so you need one with a lot of pins on it, but that's not a big deal. Could you... You know, you were talking about uh, the the speed kind of being a, a limiting factor on 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 some FPGAs. If you uh, if you were to like use two FPGAs, could you? I mean, I don't really understand like if the FPGA has a megahertz on, of its own or not. Like, <laughs> well, could well, you? The way it works on FPGA. It's not speed, it's time. Okay. Like everything has a delay. You know, when you send a signal out to wherever it's going, there's a there's a time delay. And that's what limits your speed. So if you have like a really simple thing, you know, it can run much faster than if it's more complicated because there's more paths. So would it would it be could you effectively double your megahertz with two FPGAs or but no, you could just um, do parallel processing. Okay. But, you know, you could do that in an FPGA anyways. Everything's parallel inside of it. 
Right. So you can't think of a scenario where you would cho- you would choose two FPGAs over one bigger FPGA. No, there's really not much um, use for anything like that. Uh, I think I missed two. Yeah, there was, two. Yeah. More yeah, there was more expensive there was, to do that too. There was a con- container seven with a four dollars and ninety five cents aid. It's not four ninety five, but oh well. <laughs> I hope that that's easy for him to get that money. I, I hope that's not a big problem. Like if you like, uh, I mean, the, the chat's moving a little faster than than than. Uh, my brain can catch up with. Yeah, but we're not, JF, we're not used let, to this. <laughs> let us know, JF. Just like contact us through Twitter, or Discord, or whatever. Email us, whatever you use, and let us know if you were able to take care of it on your end, or or, yeah. or if we need to do something. Because that's you know, I I don't want to make anything difficult for you. Um, and then there was also uh, Brand Brando Br- Brando Lani, <laughs> Brenda Brendelanius. <laughs> uh, that was that was my best try, Brendelanius. Uh many with five dollars, thank you. Many people mention underrated PS2 gems, but no one, including you guys, ever mentioned Steambot Chronicles. Go and need you guys to get on. I, I've heard of that. I felt like that was something more recent than PS2. Does that have anything but... to do with uh Tail Concerto? I feel like that has it's like maybe a like a not a sequel, but like yeah, I feel like it has something to do with it. But I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm probably probably wrong on that. Um, I saw there was a, a donation from the the importer as well. Oh, oh, yep, we got a uh, five Canadian bucks from the importer. Thank you. Uh, I have seen the light. Regardless, if you go for dedicated systems or the Mister Project, FPGA is the future. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that he was saying that he's recently has started getting rid of like a lot of his old systems and has moved. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, you know, the way I look at like the FPGA systems give you uh, like a new starting point, like you know these systems are this many years old well now the fpga is zero years old you know so it's it's gonna last longer not to mention it's you know made with you know it's not made with like capacitors that are gonna leak and stuff i saw another uh, one from from there was also also franklin brown with a dollar nine nine saying he's gotta get in on the giving <laughs> <laughs> well, well well no obligations but we uh <laughs> Hugely appreciate it. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've played this far in this game. Well, nice. obviously, the Mega SG's the best. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there any, like, very subtle changes to, like, the... Like, is there anything like with the Super NT that you were like, you're like, oh, I wish I did it this way instead, and you were able to do that on the Mega SG? No, not really. Everything. I mean, I'm guessing they're pretty, ultimately, pretty darn similar, other than you've got like the Sega Sega CD connector on it. No, there's quite a few changes on it. Oh yeah. It's not that that similar, yeah. But ultimately, the. Were the changes dictated more like by the needs of the Sega Genesis specifically, or were they like other reasons? Yeah, pretty much. This the bonus stage in this isn't nearly as good as the Shinobi ones. Oh, I, th- I don't know. I think that looks pretty cool. We got we got another five from 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 how I, I forgot I already forgot Brand- how I Brandalonius? said it. Brandalonius, yeah, I was I was very proud of coming up with that pronunciation. I feel like I feel like I might be hitting the nail on the head there. Uh, he says uh, Steambot Chronicles is also called Bumpy Trot in Japan. That sounds familiar. Uh, oh. And is similar and is similar to Tail Concerto. It's also made by Adarim, who I know you guys are familiar with. Yeah. Uh, let me let me let me look look it up. Uh, 
Veronica. I mean, the name is definitely familiar. Is it like an inexpensive game? Uh, well, I know Tale Concerto is is kind of expensive. That uh, that box art doesn't look familiar. Oh, that's see, I had no idea that guy was there. Oh. Yeah, when you, get, when you get that red ring of death, you really die there. Yep. I mean, it's it's like the like the original Shinobi, where it's basically one hit kills. But you, but you, but you, but you, but you like can ring when you get hit. Yeah, but but you can you can come into contact with the enemies and they won't won't kill you. It just knocks you back. Also, you can use the dog. The dog can uh, not not die, but I'll see if I can show you here. There was a there was a uh, Canadian five forty nine from Brentonius <laughs> asking uh, Kev, which consoles did you grow up with? Oh, right there. Oh, uh, let's see. I had a twenty six hundred and. 79 or 80 then a uh, atari 5200 and then i had a c64 and then an nes and a super nintendo and then a n64 which i barely used i played mario 64 on it and that was pretty much it <laughs> and then i started playing uh quake online and then that was pretty much all over for the consoles yeah the first quake or yeah, I played that for the first Quake, uh, Quake World with the uh, Team Fortress mod. I played that all the way up until like 2006. Oh, right. Really? <laughs> and then I moved on to TF2, which yeah. I'm still playing now and again. How How is it doing? Oh, I guess, I mean, I always think of, uh, like, I played TF2 a little bit, but when I was in college, I played a lot of Team Fortress Classic. Uh huh. Which I, I liked a lot. That and I. I there was. Uh... Oh, go ahead. There was one donation I missed in between those other ones from from Mitch B with two dollars saying Chai went Sega CD quality again needs 32x CD support. <laughs> it doesn't look like I like I'm Sega CD quality now though. <laughs> no, it looks like it's moving all right. Uh, do you still have like your childhood systems? The other room, the 2600, the 5200 Meta Fate. With the screwdriver, I was um, <laughs> probably about 14 or 15, so I knew enough to be dangerous, but <laughs> quite, you know, I didn't quite know enough, and it never really worked after I got after I got to it and took the parts out and was playing with it and put it back together. It didn't work again. <laughs> Did you ever feel uh, like like when you uh, when something like that happened, you're like, oh man, if I just I should not have messed with it. <laughs> no, I always learn something, so it's really not. That's too a good way to, th to look at it, because sometimes I feel like I get something exactly where I want it, and like I think, oh, I kind of push a little bit further and figure something else out, and then like I end up like breaking something, and it's like, well, I should just like been happy with what I had. Mm -hmm. It's pretty rare to break something for me now. You know, usually yeah. even if I I can usually fix it. Death is usually not permanent to my electronics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, you know, I, I think back to, what was it, the video brain story that you've got, where, like, you, you, like, have never seen a video brain, but you found the schematics for a video brain. So you yeah. bought well, all of the components that make a video brain. You made a video brain. So yeah, you know, what was funny is um, I found the chips. There was at the surplus place. There was a box, and it had chips, and it said video brains on the box <laughs> and i was like oh that's kind of weird and i was like look at these chips i didn't know what they were so i found there was two different kinds so i bought you know like four or five sets of them they were like 50 cents or something and then i went home and searched for those parts and figured out that there was a system called the video brain and then like i said i found the schematic and i built one because there was one on ebay and it was like 500 bucks i'm like yeah, i'm not paying that <laughs> So, so in other words, like, I think from your perspective, a system isn't necessarily the thing that you, you know, buy in the store and came off the assembly line. The system is a, the assembly of a certain set of parts that are designed by, the, the software is designed to interact together with. Well, yeah, I mean, the only difference between my video brain and a, uh, you know, like the one you'd buy is it just, they have a nice plastic case and a keyboard and a mm -hmm. circuit board. Mine was right. board. 
Right. So, but in that sense, like an FPGA system is also those same functions working together in that way. You know, it's like it's the literal recreation at the hardware level. Yeah. There was, uh, let me scroll back up. I think I missed something. There was, uh, 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 WRN Hokey. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, with two dollars, thank you. Why do few Genesis games have save batteries versus SNES? That I, I feel like it's the style of game. Yeah. Uh, Genesis is, uh, you know, very sort of arcade focused. Uh, or is Super Nintendo like? I mean, I guess they tend to more often be longer adventures. Um, and also, I think an interesting thing is that... Um, uh, Finally. An, an interesting thing is that... that I think it's interesting anyway. A lot, not a lot of Genesis games have infinite continues or passwords. Whereas I feel like that was much more of a common thing on Super Nintendo. Even NES. Like, they really... You know, go into that that arc, arcade sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, there's really no uh, like, there's really no like a uh, Metroid game on uh, Genesis. You know, a game like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And another thing that I thought was interesting, uh, Corey, you you were saying this was news to me. If it's if it's correct, you were saying that you think some. Genesis games use e EEPROM. Yeah, well, there's some do. Quite Rather than a battle. Yeah, there's quite a few that do. Yeah. I don't know and, why uh, Super Nintendo didn't use e EEPROM. You know, it's a lot cheaper. You don't have to have a battery, and it doesn't, like, run out or go dead. Right. I mean, do you ever have to worry about that kind of save dying? Well, not until you die. They're good for, <laughs> <laughs> good for 100 years or so. Wow. Uh, That's what the data sheet at least we know my... Yeah, because I, I remember it was a big deal when the N64, like, after a year or two, switched from batteries to EEPROM. And it's like, oh, that's never going to... You're never going to lose your save. And so now, now I'm like, well, why didn't Nintendo do that a lot sooner if Sega was doing it? I don't know. That's a good question. Well, part of it may be because, um, you know, Nintendo was dominant. And they're like, well, you know, if you want to release a cartridge, it's going to have to have a battery and a RAM chip in there. That's just how it is. You know, they didn't have to pay for it. The publishers did. Yeah. But, I mean, there's still a lot of Super Nintendo games that don't have saves. Oh, definitely. And there's some with codes and passwords. Uh, there was uh, also Brett Bates with $5. Uh uh, asking uh, if you have a Sega CD hooked up, can you play Android Assault if you have it? Uh, I don't have Android Assault. I'm not familiar with that game. Is it like an FMV game? Or... I, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I can imagine the the cover, but I don't know what it actually is like. I was glad you were able to record a lot of Sega CD games for the episode. It's like where I've got my Sega. I mean, first of all, I've only got three Sega CD games. And second of all, where I've had my Sega CD hooked up, like, is not convenient for using the Mega SG with. <laughs> I mean, the great thing is, you know, whether you. I mean, there's so much you can do with the Genesis that without any of the add ons, I mean. You know, the the Genesis is no, in my opinion, no greater or lesser of a system because of its add-ons or without it. Uh, yeah, Sega really likes their add-ons. Yeah, well, I mean, I sure. think that they had the success for the Genesis, and they were really afraid to move on because they were afraid of like losing that, and mm -hmm. in, in a way, like doing it like that happening like was the reason that they <coughs> lost their like they lost their lead i guess yeah maybe but then on the flip side they 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 had more success in japan with the saturn than they ever had right but then uh, it, but then it you think about it like the, it wasn't worth the saturn came out before the 32x there too yeah 
So maybe like I feel like, like the 32x probably was the real breaking point for losing that. It, it was it was definitely a, a misguided idea. Yeah. Uh, the thing that cracks me up is how there's like games that use the CD and the 32x. So you have to yeah. have no less than three big power bricks all plugged <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> There was a, there was a, a, a nine nine cent from Russell Russell Harmon with no comment, but thank you. <laughs> there was also what again I assume to be Australian bucks, twenty of them. Thank you from Jake uh, Qu Quinnessy, uh, saying thanks for the content. I'm always stoked to see a new video. Shout out to Kev for the great products too. I don't know well, how to get this. All of them. I knew it was gonna be a trap. <laughs> it, I, I said, I said, can I just get my tippy toe on the on the corner there? And no. But by, by, by the way, speaking of of uh, you know being stoked to see new new videos, uh, we decided on Monday that uh, Corey needs more time to do the Fancy Star video right. So I uh, started working on a video about. 3DS video output, uh, which is, is definitely going to be a different kind of video, I think. But I think people will find it interesting. It's it's more about uh, kind of looking at what has been, but it's also more about like, okay, here's what has been done well. Here's what hasn't been done well. And, you know... It's more about hope for the future. <laughs> and that but red I, to death is really deadly in that game. I yeah, uh, I I'm just, <laughs> I yeah you know, I'm I'm kind of like enjoying it though. Like I yeah. have not played this game in a long time, and it's kind of got me right now. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be an entertaining video, even though it's not uh, not necessarily about like what you can do right now. Yeah. We hope that it will spur some discussion, I guess. Yeah. Hang on, I think Sandy needs to go out. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, when, when the dog gets hurt, it becomes a puppy. Oh, that's funny. I yeah. didn't notice that before. Then we'll eventually get big again i think i i might have to kill an enemy though oh you have to give him you have to give him perina dog <laughs> yeah. oh see i i thought he, he was gonna reload uh uh for 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 people saying like oh someone gave 500 dollars, it was a mistake Hopefully it doesn't end up being a difficult mistake to correct. I think it's time for me to move on to something else. Maybe I'll play something, play something Master System. Is there is, was there like any specific Master System stuff you had to go you you went to and played a lot? Find yourself playing a lot of? Uh, not really. I played the Sonic One on there a bit. Nice. Oh yeah, did you do you have um? You should try. Uh, the Wolfenstein going to homebrew on Genesis. Oh, uh, try that. Try oh, the oh, you, oh, on on Genesis, okay. Yeah, on Genesis, it's awesome. And then turn that. So play it, and then turn the dither blending on, and then see the big, huge difference it makes. Uh, okay, so just the it's regular on, one, the full fix. Here we yeah. Go. Uh, there's a twenty-five dollar donation from X X Nine who says thanks for all your great work, Ketris. Fingers crossed for 32x oh, nice. support via FPGA. Okay, let's let's check this out. Thank you. Uh, all right. So keep, so turn off the dither blending and then start the game and then turn it on and it's a huge difference. And just I, I usually keep the dither blending at zero also. Oh wow. The difference yeah, it makes. Yeah, I mean that it makes it like a a lot better. I mean, I don't even have that. In, I mean, if I can go, 
usually I keep that. I turn that off or I set it to zero. Usually is how I run it. Got it. Yeah, I mean, did, that's, I, mi did that, I miss any? Yeah, we just missed the dither blending in Wolfenstein, oh. which is like a great place. I mean, look at this. Look at the difference. Oh, wow. Yeah. I actually didn't know there was a. This is a really awesome port of this game. This guy did a really good job on it. Yeah, it is. It's impressive. It's got a pretty good frame rate, and uh, all the audios there even ported the FM music. I, th I think there's a. I think there's a twenty-five dollar donation. I, 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 I read it. I did it already. What was it? As uh, uh, from X Nine, who says thanks for all your great great work, uh, Captress. Fingers crossed for thirty-two X support via FPGA. <laughs> I, this, that does look crazy good. I oh, mean, this, I, like, this, this is a good looking version. It's the next one that has, if you're wondering where that was. The what? little hole, with the hidey hole with the secret is the next room. <laughs> oh. Um, like over, is it like one of these? Oh, no, you missed it. It was the room before. Oh, okay. Mitch V says with another $2, uh, nice. We have so many donations. Ranger X next. Not sure, not sure what Ranger X next means, but oh, Ranger X is a is a game. Oh, oh okay. No, it must have been the other one. It's been a while since I played this. Yeah, it's been. The, I used to play this on the PC all the time. <laughs> you know, I actually never owned any versions of this. I, I, all the only time I ever played it was uh, is on a, on a shareware disc at my friend's house. I, I played I I played it. on my uncle's computer a few times. I've always had a soft spot for the Wolfenstein games. I actually called them up and bought it, and they sent me, you know, floppy disks. Really? That's <laughs> yeah. cool, though. Apparently, those are, like, really rare and valuable. People actually want the original floppies that you'd have to call and buy for whatever reason. Oh, I can imagine. I, I, <laughs> I can imagine that being the case, because that's... Was there a box at all, or...? No box. No, they were just in an envelope. Wow. They are just, like, working out of their houses, probably. I think Doom was the first game where they actually had a retail um, box for it. I think. I think I I watched some documentary on uh, ID software. It's really pretty cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean that was another one I didn't really play because I didn't. I just didn't have a computer for the longest time. Uh, I think I. It's probably like before I had my own computer. I was probably in eleventh grade, so that would be like ninety five or ninety six that point yeah that's where the secret is oh you ran out of ammo yeah i'm i'm, uh, I'm dead i'm gonna i'm gonna play some uh, ranger x <laughs> that was requested i remember one of my memories of playing doom was i was playing my mom walked in she's like why are you playing that that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sadface says with, with $2, I, I believe he is trying to make a, a German uh, Wolfenstein. <laughs> Wolfenstein? Uh, Wolfen Wolfenstein. Uh, where is yeah, I. it's funny because I remember like the friend who had a computer, his parents didn't have any problem with Doom or Wolfenstein. But for some reason, the idea of of populace and playing as God was like really <laughs> was, was a, was a real problem. <laughs> That's interesting. But no. I was, uh, lo loading up popul populace was like the most boring footage in the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And not only that, but the game basically has no music. It's just, uh, it's just like a heartbeat. Uh, WRN Hokey says with two dollars, please do a Jaguar video. It's not lame, I promise. Uh, uh one day. On. Which, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of want a Jag, don't you? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, to, just to kind of have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I mean, I think it would be fun to do some of a Jaguar for sure. I mean, you, you know you can always count on John Lindemann to provide you your Jag fix. Yeah. 
You see, that oh, a system I never played. I, I've never played it either. Yeah, I, also, I played it uh, very. I, the only thing I played on it, I think, is really Alien versus Predator, and that's it. I'm still. I still want a clear Jaguar case. I have a project for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dustin Kramer also says with two dollars, big ups to Corey and Kev for making bald look good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Kevin, when when did you when did you shave your head? Uh, let's see, probably about 15, 17 years ago. Fifteen years ago. Oh wow! So what was? I, have, I had really long hair, so I went from like really long hair to no hair. <laughs> did you feel it was the most freeing thing? that is like ever happened because that's how i felt when i cut my yeah hair. i felt pretty good for a long time they're not having to do anything with my hair other than just shave it off twice a week <laughs> yeah, i do it monday and thursday so <laughs> it's as long as it'll get because tomorrow will all be gone <laughs> see i i don't go down the skin i just use like a uh just like a like a buzzer just like at the lowest with, uh -huh. with no guard on it so it you know, it, it keeps some fuzz there, but I just shave it in the shower with a head blade. Oh yeah, it only take it takes like five minutes, and then you're <laughs> done. You don't have any cleanup or anything. <laughs> Great. Oh, we we got we got a ten dollars smoke monster donation. Just Ooh. saying, in wigging Kevtris. <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 we do, by the way, have have more uh, extensive uh, Kevtris. Material that is like been way, way, sort of been waiting stuff. way too long for us to like to yeah. Have, have... Was that, a, that was been a year ago now. It's it been was, a year. It I mean, it's like it's been it's been a right. It was April, April. Was it? or was it, it May? Was, it was it, it was, was April, the very end of yeah, April. Yeah. Yes. We we hate that it has been that long. Yeah, but that, that like like that is try as like that's your next like I mean it's already you're like you're like well into it already. But I am into it. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, that is gonna be it, your it's next. Just like it's been. It's been real, like we took on too many projects last year. <laughs> At one time, yeah. It's and been... and like the problem has been like like prioritizing those projects and also like while one of us is like working on a project, a big project, like the other has to like keep channel content going. So it's been this really difficult to balance that. Yeah. Um. But yes, I mean that is that is going to be, I mean there, there, there's the a significant amount of material for that. That is like by far the biggest thing that we have. I mean, the, the biggest thing. Well, I mean, I mean the, that has the most well, material. There, there's like, right. Well, it's, it's going to be at least it's like two, four terabytes of, of footage. Or yeah, something like that, but total. there's like kind of two different products that are coming out of what you're talking about. Right, right? but I think right. that like it's, it's, there's a good yeah. chance that like that could all end up being. Like I mean, I mean, yeah, there is, yeah, it's two, it's two. Like I, I guess now that when you say it like that, yes. But it, but the Kevtris specific element will uh, will be coming first. So, yeah. Uh, people will learn everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's except like so the, much good stuff. Except for the Mega like, SG, because the Mega SG wasn't. Was an announced when we talked to you. Although yeah. you you probably had stuff out on your desk that you had to go hide when we came over. <laughs> yeah, I probably did. I can't even remember. It's been so long ago. I know it's but, it's uh, it's almost it's it's like we are we're a little embarrassed that it's been. As well, long there's as a it. number of projects that we're embarrassed has taken so long to get finished. But uh, whoa, this is awesome! This like wireframe tunnel. Yeah, I don't know. It's like the, I, now that you're playing this game, I feel like I've looked it up before. Isn't this like super expensive? Uh, I don't think so. Really? Because it looks awesome. Is it is it Japanese only or is it American? No, it's American. I'm gonna look it up because it, it looks really good. Uh, the old eBay's. Oh no, not 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 expensive. I mean, it, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not like it's not like crazy or anything. I guess like fifty or so. Yeah, it's not too bad. 
I think I single-handedly made um, Sega CDs really expensive. On <laughs> that. I mean, you know, as soon as the the Mega SG was announced, I went on eBay and bought a Model 2, like that same day. Because I knew that, I mean, I have my childhood Model 1 that I is, is my main system, but I knew that we'd want to be able to show the Mega SG on the Model 2 and see, you know, how it works with it and everything. So I, I, I immediately went on and, and bought it that that same day because i knew that they were going to go up in price yeah i like the model too so much better it's a lot easier to use that stupid tray oh. see i like i i feel like the model one is it's the model one combined with the model one genesis is probably my favorite looking console i just i mean it's, I, it, I do agree it looks it looks a lot cooler yeah it does oh i agree it looks a lot better but just the reliability functionality. factor. Definitely. I mean, not having like the, like, yeah, having like the drawer on it is like makes a huge difference, but I don't know. It my was, my childhood uh, system is still working, knock on wood. So I'm going to get it fixed up to, uh, uh, I'm just going to send it to, uh, Mobius Strip Tech, who's going to, going to put a new belt in it, change the caps in it, and, do whatever. There's, Maybe I should um, have him up the top. Mine, the caps are probably original on it. I never even thought to look. Yeah, I mean, same, same with mine. I mean, it's just like the got mine the Christmas. Well, they're the, not you know. leaking. It's probably fine. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's not leaking. I don't know. I'd be really sad if I lost my childhood childhood Sega CD because I have my uh, childhood was, Genesis as well. But it's it's kind of to the wayside a, now because. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, there's a there's a 350 from Tony Galvin. Same. Advise against playing PS3 on OSSC and 480i 4X. Uh, yes, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I can't really think of any advantage to doing that unless it had something to do with like PS2 backwards compatibility, maybe. But I think other than any potential input lag, like I feel like PS2 backwards compatibility, like the the systems there are backwards compatible, not the PS2 classics. The systems there are backwards compatible, I is in my opinion the best look for PS2 games. Uh, not uh, this other than a CRT. I wonder what happens uh, if I try to run Virtual Racing off of the EverDrive. Like it's it's it's, cool. it's it's interesting that it's in the pack at all. Why yeah. would it, why would it be? Maybe it's just in case. Probably planning for the future just in case uh in case there's like some support for it i gotta run to the bathroom i drank this whole huge thing of water i'll be right back <laughs> i'll try some crusader city man i uh <laughs> i uh for some reason, I had it in my head that Crusader of Sinti was a different game. Like, I had it in my head it was like a brawler or something. Uh, I knew it was like a really expensive Genesis game, but I just had never really looked into it before. And uh, I knew that Corey had got the Japanese version when we were in Japan. But I just still never really looked it up. And then I just like randomly tried it through the EverDrive on the Mega SG. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically Zelda, except like you've actually got like r this really smooth animation that like you actually have eight directions that he faces. Uh, and the, the cloud dithering trick actually ended up being a really good uh, example to show for the dither blending. But like... After I did that dither blending thing, like the, like I couldn't get the game out of my head the whole next day, and so I I bought a I bought a Japanese I bought a Japanese copy on eBay. I mean, it's, the Japanese version is expensive, and I think doesn't the U.S. version? I mean, I'm not even paying for the U.S. version, but isn't the U.S. version a cardboard box game anyway? I don't know. <laughs> I, think it, I think it is. Yeah, but the. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like a really good game. I mean, I, I, I'm going to 
start taking some Japanese classes this summer, so maybe I could actually play the Japanese version one day instead of having to play the English version. What's the rarest Genesis game I own? I don't know. I don't... Like... I've got a couple of pricey-ish uh, Mega Drive games. I've got Bare Knuckle 3 and Monster World 4. Uh, yeah, isn't Contra Hardcore like over uh, $100 now? I mean, it was it certainly wasn't when I bought it. I think Alicia Dragoon is getting kind of... I feel bad that Corey doesn't have Alicia Dragoon because it's a really good game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess a few of my Genesis games have appreciated in price since I got them. Oh, was Marshall... Uh, apparently Marshall was in here earlier. Oh. Uh, someone was asking Kevtris if you uh, knew what Marshall was working on currently. No. I didn't, and if I, you did, you would never say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What am I going to play? Um, play some Sparkster. How about? Let's, oh, somebody. I see someone saying Bubsy time. Okay. We'll play some Bubsy. Yeah. Did, 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 did anyone watch uh, John Lineman's, uh, uh April Fool's joke that actually turned out to not be an April Fool's joke? And it's, <laughs> for the most part, a straight up legit uh df retro <laughs> have you turned did you turn did the blending back off i think you did yeah that's one thing i noticed on genesis all these companies were trying to make the next you know mascot like sonic or mario oh yeah, oh, well, yeah. but what's interesting about bubsy you know especially after seeing john lineman's video is that the uh, the Super Nintendo and the Genesis version are extremely close. Like it might it might just be about the closest multi platform game of that generation, and that's like pretty standard now. Like the games are like virtually identical now, other than like resolution and whatever. But uh, but back then, like there were very different characteristics. Sometimes they were completely different games. Well, yeah, it's because, you know, you, they couldn't you reuse the code. Yeah. They had to basically rewrite it. And, you know, on modern games, you know, it's the same code base for all the versions. So it's not such yep. an issue anymore. Uh, so it's interesting just how close they got it here. There was, uh, let me scroll back up. I think I missed a donation. Oh, this is from Carnivore Bear with, with $2 Australian. What's the more powerful FPGA, Mega SG or Super NT? Ooh, 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 ooh. I can, I can answer this one. I know it's the same FPGA. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's the same one. I don't know. This, this, I don't think that this is a great game. <laughs> not, it's not for you. Do, you. do you think John overrated it in his in his April first? I don't video? know. Maybe maybe he thinks it's okay, but uh, I don't know. Like it, the. I don't I mean, know. No, it does. It doesn't look great. But it looks passable. I guess. Well, when you rent this from the video store and you have to play it all weekend, I think you <laughs> want to like it. Yeah, you would force yourself to be like, oh, I guess, I guess I'll play it. I mean, I, I I distinctly remember. I don't remember if it was a Genesis or a Super Nintendo, but I, I definitely remember uh, Bubsy being. Uh, on a on a demo unit in Funko Land years and years ago. Well, I remember it being on the cover of magazines and stuff, but when are more Mega SGs being shipped? I don't know. Are they are they Is it sold out? Is it sold out? I mean I haven't been paying attention to that. It's I, I like seeing the occasional uh, Twitter posts of somebody who got a white a white one because that's the one you don't see it very very often. Do you think not many people ordered it or ah uh, shipping later or something? I don't know. I don't know. 
I mean, the only thing I can think the white one is maybe supposed to be like Dreamcast or something. Maybe, but I, I, I think it's just supposed to be like the opposite of the black one, black uh, Super. Yeah, Nintendo. I mean, I guess it, it does give one option for people who maybe don't like black consoles, or like if they, if they had a, um, a I can play Rampage a lighter, a lighter colored Super NT, like it could match that. Like, because I mean, definitely the black systems you can see dust on a lot more. I think, you know. Yeah. They maybe like you know, it just didn't match the oh, other systems. This is a they great had. game. This Wait, is, is this? This is, this is what? This the Genesis Gen Rampage? Oh, it's yeah, it's the best version of the game. Oh, basically. I didn't, I, I didn't know it. It's it's way better than the. Uh, there's uh there's three there's three characters in it. was Ralph wasn't in the arcade version was he? No, oh. this, 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 they, they, all these characters were in the in the arcade. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I guess my I guess I guess my view is is uh, is colored by the uh, the Tengen the version. version. Yeah. Well, I, um, it, what that wasn't Tengen, was it? I feel like it was Tengen. I, I mean, I've, I've got a, I mean, it's not a tin game cart. It's, oh. it's a, a... Well, I got to tell you, if you, this, this is the version they have. I didn't know it existed. Well, the PC version's pretty good. I played that a lot. Uh, I've never, I've, I've not played, played, played that, but I, I mean, I just, I like this one because I played it as a, my, as a my, my introduction to Rampage was the, the N64 game, and... I bought it several months ago, but I haven't. I haven't even put it in my system. But I, I, I'm, I'll be curious to see how it how it compares in my memory. But that that's like the rampage that comes to mind. I mean, it's, it's not a lot to it, but it's is great arcade game for sure. Like this is the kind of game that. Arcades were made for. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, we got a five dollar from from Kairu V. Thank you. Is uh, is CRT service mini geometry calibration stuff still on board for an episode? Any chance of a copy nest? Uh, a copy nest in the high def NES or is firmware packed? Well, it is kind of in there. I, I've um, done copy nest stuff through the high def, but I never really released it. So, but yeah, I mean, what would you, what would you dump it to anyway? It's got a USB port on the board. Oh, okay. okay. But you'd have to have your system open. Well, or had snake a cable out of it. Yeah, I guess so. So I guess there is room on it technically for it then? Well, it already is on there. It's just um, I never really released the stuff to use it. I mean, uh, I tested it and made sure everything worked, but I never really like released it or anything. So I wasn't, you know, it wasn't fully complete. So I wanted to get it fully complete. As 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 for the uh, CRT geometry stuff, I mean. We 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 want to get that monkey off our back at some point. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, I said it a while back. I said that, pro like, promising that episode was the biggest mistake ever made <laughs> in terms of the channel. Uh, but yes, we do eventually want to do it. Uh, Carn Carnivore Bear says, with uh, two Australian dollars, uh, Kempster should live stream reverse engineering. Well, he probably can't do the stuff that. He's doing for work, but maybe you could do it for some fun stuff sometime. I don't know. Would people really want to see that? I, oh, think I, I bet you'd get tons of people watching it. You, I think it'd be kind would... of boring just me sitting there with a multimeter muttering about stuff and writing it down. Would <laughs> people really want to see that? People, people that... I mean, trust me. <laughs> look, 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 man. I, I don't understand, like, you know, the whole streaming thing too much because I... I, I am not a multitasker, so like I feel like if I start watching a stream, then I end up like getting absolutely nothing else done. So streams are dangerous for me. But there's but people just love to watch streams, 
and people trust me they they would they would watch it you you th- you might think it'd be boring but people would watch it <laughs> well yeah people want to watch me like do fpga development i think that'd be pretty boring where i just sit around for 12 minutes while it compiles <laughs> watching the youtube video <laughs> <laughs> Well, they they probably want to watch because you never know when you might run into something like a like a challenge, and they, they'd be interested to see how you solve certain things. Yeah, true. Well, that happens quite a bit, but there's a lot of boring parts too. Yeah. I think it's funny on this rampage if you. If the building collapses while you're on it, you get injured. But if you, like, jump off of the building, <laughs> don't. Yeah. I quite figured that one out, even though you're falling from the same height. Well, it's, same. It's, it's because it's because you, you're falling against your will. Right? <laughs> you're, yeah, you're not prepared. Like yeah, right. Yeah. He, he, like, covers his eyes when he does it. <laughs> I always like that. His, like, hand is sticking out. Well, there, there's a number of Australian... Uh... Quite, quite, quite a lot of Australian donations tonight. I'm, I'm guessing Australia. Uh, uh, with uh, from Josh Bassett two nine nine, asking Kevin what he thinks about Mister, which, which, which we've, we've, we've Went said a few it. times. Yeah. Yeah, but basically he said, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not getting into it. You know, he's not. Uh, you're not paying attention because you you don't want it to you, you don't want to for one conflict of interest I guess you could say right yeah and you don't want people to think like oh are you taking anything from that or yeah. you know and you you know you don't want really want it to I guess kind of color your perception of like how you approach projects yeah I mean I do everything myself from the ground up I don't use anybody else's code and I don't think that's going to change. Because because it's, it's because it's fun. It's, it's fun. I mean, this, is, this is fun for you. <laughs> Not only that, but I mean, like the like the coding methodology is probably totally different from how I do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, I that's it, the best way to do it. You know, just and then especially if you have to go in and change stuff. Or fix stuff up, then you know. Yeah, you've written it all yourself, so you yeah. have a good idea of how it's supposed to work. Right. Yeah, Terry McGill is saying from uh, Hi, My Life in Gaming. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Well, welcome. Well, I mean, maybe we've got a better stream time for people in Australia than we realize. Maybe. <laughs> um, Electron Ash says, you know, Mister is kind of a different platform slash market altogether, and. I definitely agree. That I mean, that was you know, I, I thought it was important for us to address Mister in our video. At least, um, like, yeah, you gotta. You, I mean, it's but, there, there's too and, many people and, talking about it right now that you can't just like right. pretend it can't exist. Right, right, right. I mean, it's it's you know, it, it's it's definitely something that, that that you need to discuss if you're discussing FPGAs. Even if your video is not about it, you need to acknowledge it. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, like we said in the, in the video, it's like, I see it as being for the DIY crowd. Like, it's definitely for people who want to tinker. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you've had to have some help setting yours up. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, there's there's times where, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's not... It, take, it, takes, some, it takes some fiddling, for sure. Um, you know, so the... The dedicated FPGA consoles, those are, you know, more, uh... Um, what is... It says, I have an extra on 1502 and I'm trying to take S-Video and turn it into an RGB signal, but I keep getting a double picture. Any reason why? Is it... Is, is, is it making are, it 480p somehow? Yeah, it must be... I, I would guess it's outputting 480p. And you're outputting to a monitor that cannot accept 480p. That That's, that's typically what 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 it looks like when you send 480p to a display that can't accept it (laughs) 
I said on this rampage, your uh, your priority is supposed to be eating people pretty much to keep your health up. Right. <laughs> I, I just like I just ate that fish, the fish bowl. But this, I I think, compared to the NES version, this it just like it looks so much better, too. Yeah. Which version is this? Yeah, uh, this is the Master System version. Okay. I thought. But yeah, yeah. For some reason, at first I I I, I kind of just realized because I noticed the border. Like I thought it was Genesis, and it was just like a not impressive looking Genesis. <laughs> thing, for some reason. No, I. But Master, I Master System border. borders are so weird. Like it's just really only on one side well this game well i wonder why it's got that extra border there because the game doesn't scroll horizontally well some developers just like to turn it on because they just like it there i guess <laughs> i guess <laughs> uh oh carnivore bear with with the australian bucks again how difficult is it to switch from software dev to fpga dev well i think you were saying that they aren't the, the, the Verilog is extremely different from, like, other programs. It looks superficially like C code, but what you're really doing, you're describing a digital logic circuit in a text file versus writing code. That makes sense. Is, is it possible to use, like, a... Like, a... Like a more of a, a graphical interface for like being like, okay, I want this, 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 and this, and this, that, and all connected rather than just like hard, you know, just Oh, hard you can do schematic entry. I do not recommend it. I started <laughs> doing it that way. Don't do it. No. <laughs> Stay away. Stay away. <laughs> The no Verilog for me has been really, really good. I it really fits my uh, the way I develop. I guess you know VHDL is another one, but I don't like it. There's just way too much typing in it. Can you can you use both languages on the same chips? Oh sure, you can use it on the same project too. Oh okay. Um, out of curiosity, so no. So the whole cheat uh, system in here is built on like what the Game Genie does, correct? Yeah. Uh, so there, no Game Genie ever came out for the uh, for the Master System. I mean, would it even be possible to put something in there that you could like adjust the code in a way uh, to enable cheats, like find stuff that way, even though like no codes exist? Like I know there's like a uh, cheat finder. Well, not even just like a cheat finder, but just a uh, just the ability to put in cheat codes into Master System games, and then people could maybe find stuff. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. it's possible, but it's just that whether people are going to create them or not. Right. I mean, but <laughs> is, like, is there a Master System game genie? There's not a Master System, but there's like a uh, there's a Game Gear one. I know. Um, hang on, it's it's something else. I it. But I mean, oh, I wonder if. The, a uh, game action replay type thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, replay. While you're while you're looking that up, seventy four vid gamer gave a dollar ninety nine saying, "Is FPGA possible for disc drive consoles like PS one?" And I, I think so, right? There's there's no reason that it couldn't be running from the disc live while running as an FPGA. Okay, so what I see here is oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt before we can answer there's an action replay in the uk that was released in the uk but it doesn't work on ntsc systems the game gene never made it past prototypes prototype stage i just i'm uh, like i'm working on this uh i've been working on this fantasy star episode and i, I i've been to speed up my progress through different versions i've been using like a game genie for it and i just wish that there was something to use on the master system and like, I just don't know if there was a game genie type. Like if you could if you could apply like the game genie codes to, I mean I guess that's the wrong way to put it. Oh, uh, well, basically make a fake game genie for master system. Yeah, and then people could just like, just like like discover codes now again. Well, they could make them. Yeah, sure. 
who's going to do it, I don't know, but right. you could do it. <laughs> oh, somebody. <laughs> see, let's get... so, so, some people in the chat are kind of kind, kind, of, kind of wondering about your, your feelings on, on PC Engine FPGA. <laughs> but but which, which I know is a topic that's coming before, but earlier in the stream you said, you know, you you wouldn't be against doing it. I would be against doing it. I'm not really all that enthused to do it. Play <laughs> <laughs> like some black belt. Oh, there's a uh, there's another what? donation from Master Meep. Oh, Master Meep with the nine ninety nine. Thank you. Uh, greetings from Bradenton, Florida. Ketris, you're a wizard, bro. Love your consoles. Emily, keep up the great content. Will do. Thank you. I always love the effect I, I of really, this. I, I really want this game now. <laughs> just feel I love how the guys explode. Yeah. Like, it's 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 just like one of those well, very a, common Master System games. I mean, it's, it's a Fissa North Star game. Right. So that, that's the, the explosions make sense. There's some good par parallax on there, there on the ground. Well, I don't know if I'd call it parallax, but yeah. It kind of creates a... a a perspective. Really? You don't think it? I mean, look at it. It moves when... Well, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Kev just could, could sort of tell us what's going on there. I mean, I assume it, that that's like a per scan line, per scan it's line like, moving track. It's horizontal interrupts chain, and then they change the, the scroll register. Oh, uh, okay. So it's a it's, it is a really impressive effect. There's a lot of Master System games that do that. Shadow of the Beast on Genesis does it pretty well. They use it a lot, even though you may not notice for um, like those score and status bars that don't move. You know, it's the same thing. Ah. They just set the scroll registers to a fixed value, and then when the interrupt hits, they change it. See, but once you fight the bosses, I don't know if I'll get to the boss here. Uh, it goes into like a a closer view for the the fight. It's it's kind of like Russian attack. Yeah, a little, a little bit, yeah. These guys are all. Every single one of them are bald. You know, to, to, to be honest, I will probably definitely almost always play Master System games on the Mega SG just because pause is on the controller. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, putting the ability to put a pause on the on the adapter is, you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of fun. I mean, it supports it, so why not? That's yeah. what it's on there for. It, 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 I've actually got the the adapter sitting right here. I mean, I, it like it amuses me that there's like literally one component on the <laughs> board. There's one resistor. That's for the pause button. <laughs> oh, so it, it is. doesn't even have That's to have. It. It. Well, if you don't have that resistor on there, it would probably randomly pause and unpause when you're playing it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Would this work? Like the 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 case, the the shell doesn't fit in a Genesis, but would it would the board function in a real Genesis? Oh, it well, it's it's what it is, you know. Okay, well, because I, I wasn't sure if like the power base did like something to like inform the Genesis like go into Master System mode or something. Yeah, there's one of the cartridge pins that does it. So yeah, that, oh, would, okay. that works just fine on a regular Genesis if you take the shell off it. Mm -hmm. Kevin, bring you it works too. <laughs> Were you aware, like, this is something I was not aware of until fairly recently, of the, of how much the NT Mini is going for on eBay these days? Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> like, someone <laughs> say that, like, they're, like, like, thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's, it looks like 1500 is about the going rate. That is insane. Yeah, I never would have guessed it. I wonder <laughs> how much mine goes for. I have, like, a 
have like a pink one and a cyan <laughs> one. I what those are for. Yeah, yeah, you showed us those. Oh, probably. <laughs> A significant amount more because there's no other other versions of. of, of I mean, ones. it seems like you keep making stuff like that. You've got, uh, you know, you were telling us that uh, that uh, the, the original Kevtris ColecoVision cartridges they don't go for that much, but you know, they they went for more than they're worth. <laughs> yeah, I sold them for twenty two dollars, and you know they go on eBay for like three hundred bucks. I don't, I don't think one's been on eBay in many years, so I don't know how much it's worth. <laughs> master system, the, the master. So the master system version, on the back of the box, it says graphics that will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the low frame rate. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. But it's it's yeah. just like such an intense thing, like graphics that will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what about that ad that says the more you play with it, the harder it gets? <laughs> Which for the gen was it Genesis? I think it was. Uh it was a mag it was a magazine ad. Oh, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen that one. Something gripping a joystick, and it says the more you play with it, the harder. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there is, you know. This they, is they had a big meeting. The, they have that. Is, is this Galaxy Force one or two? Ah, uh, one. I mean, Gal the arcade Galaxy Force two looks awesome. Yeah. I don't think a weasel in your pants would be very fun. So anything be better than other than that would probably be more fun than that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, so it looks like the... <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I thought I thought the $500 was still up there, but it looks like it's 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 gone now. Like, I thought that would oh, be maybe, up there. Maybe, maybe he fixed it. Maybe he fixed it. It seems how much you pay de determines how long that stays up there. If you pay more, it, it stays up there longer. Yeah, but right, I, I... Right, I, right, I, but I'm, I'm wondering if it, it, like, it still has a lot of time left on it, I thought. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Well, this game has an FM soundtrack, too. My, my, Mike May says, I was kindly given an NT Mini, and the serial number is 0000. But would you know if that's anything special or not? No, it actually has a serial number. When I... Get a firmware update, you'll be able to see what the actual serial number is. Huh. I guess the game is it's a pretty bad version. Uh, just a pretty bad game in general. Uh let's see. Uh, let's see one more game for the for the night. Oh yeah, did Terra Onion ever um release their update that they were gonna do uh, to the, the delaying it? I don't know if they ever did. To the SSDS three or is it or or is there another? There was supposed to be something else. I think they kept saying they were going to announce, and they kept delaying it. I don't know if they ever announced. Oh, it. oh, they're supposed to have some sort of like big video to announce something. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, it hasn't I, happened yet. No, they're supposed to be doing some sort of like, like Nintendo Direct style thing, like video release. I don't know. Uh, but I thought it was supposed to happen a few weeks ago, so I guess that may, it would make sense if it got delayed. Uh, Brentonius uh, comes back with the Canadian 549. Kev, what's the last game you were really into? Let's see. Uh, well, I just played um, Skyrim again. I'm like level 248 in it. Does that count? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know you could get that many levels in it. <laughs> or is that it's pretty much the last because then you have everything. <laughs> Uh, and then there's Yeah Buddy with two dollars saying think Saturn slash N64 <laughs> FPGA will ever be possible. Anything's possible. Anything is possible, whether it's realistic or not. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna play some. I'll play some Mega Man Wily Wars, I guess. So. Is there? Do you see a future for Saturn HDMI console like this <laughs> from from Scoop Pixels? Thank you. <laughs> but I guess it's kind of a Kind of a, a, a doubled up question there. Okay, so there's 
so yeah, I guess Mega Man Wily Wars is another one that has the uh, EE prom because this has hacks that use SRAM. Oh, okay. Like a big thing that I've have a lot of interest in is taking save files from one format and putting it like transferring the other other mediums i guess is a good way to do it i've i've been really struggling with the genesis like the everdrive like the srams or like i've been taking uh uh like virtual console saves and you can extract the save file out of it and you just like change the extension that the uh desk dot srm and they'll work on various things and uh Certain games work on the Genesis, some of them don't. But it worked. But every game worked where I did that with uh, on Super NES. Like either worked on the with the jailbreak or the uh, SD to SNES. Does the OSSC with retro access cables look just as good as the Mega SG? Well, I mean, you're, you're dealing with an analog signal there. Yeah. So I mean, you're going to have some kind of jail bars for sure. Um, I mean, you, you're not going to see like a lot of like moving noise. Um, if you dialed in the optimized, um, the optimized sizing, it would be kind of possible to get it very close or similar to like what a pure digital signal would look like other than the jail bars. Of course, there's the triple bypass mod. So if you had like a triple bypass Genesis, on the OSSC and dialed in the optimized thing, it would probably look pretty close. But then the problem with that is like Genesis uses this, uh, a, a mixture of 320 and 256 modes. So you, uh, you, especially when some games will switch between the two modes and it won't look like perfect for both. And then, but the mega SG switches between 256 and 320 pixel wide games on the fly. Um, Let's check out the but with OSSC, I mean, any better. honestly, for, for the most part on the OSSC, I, I just use the generic four three, which will be a little softer, but you know, for, for all intents and purposes, it would look similar. It would look it would look similar, but there's definitely a difference. I mean, you can see we've got some uh, we've got some uh, some comparisons in our episode. You know, I I don't think I zoomed in like super crazy on any of them, but I I think I blew them up um, by two times or something. We can kind of see. Bolt Next 2 is. It's not, it's not a great game. I mean, it looks similar enough to the first. I mean, what what do you see as the problem? Um. Well, for one thing, just kind of playing it now, it, it feels like everyone's made out of paper, kind of. There's like no. Like, everyone just like moves so quick. And there's no, it doesn't seem like there's any feedback to, you know, like hitting the enemy. All right, when you get hit, like it's, it just, it feels, I don't know, I can't, ex it's like the term for that, the game feel. <laughs> game feel, isn't that like a term? I, I don't know. I don't know, but it just, it does not. There's no, there's no oomph and Yes, there's no exactly. Feedback. It doesn't, it's not like Streets of Rage where, you know, it's like got that really, good tactile feel to throwing people down and stuff. Right. And even with well, the first one has it, the first gold max does. And the music's not as good. I don't know. It's a d disappointing sequel. I remember getting it for Christmas and being real disappointed by it. And then what about three? Uh, well, three never came out in the U.S. It was just like oh, on really? collections and stuff. Yeah. Um. Now, someone asked if um, you can make a mega SD from FPGAs from ten 
five and 15 years ago. Yeah, I'm sure you could. It would have been a lot more expensive, though. Oh, yeah. But... I did my first uh, FPGA NES um, 15 years ago now. And how much would the would the with the FPGA that you did that on, how much did that FPGA cost at that time? Um, well, I bought two of them and they were $123 each or something like that. They were pretty expensive. And that was a 12K part, a Cyclone mm -hmm. 1. So this is the one you were saying. I, I'd never played uh, the Genesis version of Super Street Fighter 2. I didn't realize that it was more like so much more advanced because I was I was mainly playing it on the on the Super NES. Well, what was it you were saying about it earlier? I I think I was like I it has know. like a different like a different mapper or something like that. Oh, is Genesis for the most part just using one mapper? Um, well, I mean, I know that this uses, as uh, Super Street Fighter 2 does, use, uses like an advanced one. They said that, uh, that's what, uh, the one demo, the Overdrive demo uses. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a couple different mappers. That's the main one. There's also one that has the save RAM mapped under the ROM. So I call that technically a mapper. And then what about the uh, the lock on cartridge? That's technically got a mapper in it, also. Oh yeah. But unlike NES, it's not that bad. Yeah. Street Fighter Two was always my go-to to check like how good a D-pad is on, on a mm. game because I because I can do like the dragon punches like over and over again. So I just going. I, I mean any. Again. Any Contra game is, is that for me, just checking, you know, like if you, if you, if, if your diagonals are like way too fiddly, then it's not a great D-pad. This is like a, like a restoration, like an arcade restoration, but the audio is really, really low on this version. It's not the official version, it's just like a hack. Is this a six button game? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, six button control uh controllers came out for the Genesis because of Street Fighter 2 essentially. Uh, Car Carnivore Bear we're back with the, 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 the two Australian bucks. What non game FPGA projects do you work on, Captress? Well, I made a cryogenic freezer control with an FPGA. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> it uses a Z80 FPGA. <laughs> well, it's the same Z80 core, yeah, that I developed a long time ago. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever use the, like, the NT Mini or Super NT or... Mega SG boards like to just do like non game stuff for fun on. Like, do you ever just use them for testing? Oh, yeah, they're really good development platforms. At least for me, they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I think that's gonna. I mean, I'm just going to finish off Guile, and that's what I think it's going to... That'll do. Yeah, oh, oh, man, I can't believe it's midnight. <laughs> yeah, we still got 535 people here. Wow. Yeah, we, we definitely broke a record. Yeah, I didn't know, Significantly. I didn't know if we could do it again. <laughs> there, there's a lot of speculation, I think, at first. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if the Mega SG will do as well because people are not as excited about Genesis stuff, but I think that it's done very well. I, I think I think there was a lot of pent up demand for Genesis stuff. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Like Nintendo stuff has been done and done and done and done, and you know people are like, when when are we going to get get like some really premium Genesis stuff? You know. Yeah. 
And you know, I, I was just talking about the the uh, the Genesis Mini. Uh, mm -hmm. I did like a, a video log. I was just thinking about how like I is 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 decent as I think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to sell super well because I think that the general consumer won't know that there's a difference between like the at game stuff that's been coming out. Abs absolutely. Yeah. They, yeah. Sega is definitely cheapened their library and their, 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 their shelf space in target or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. And, and two, you know, the the PlayStation Classic was a disaster and people, yeah, you're right. Your average person isn't going to know that it's, that it's different from that. Right. I think that's going to be, so I don't think it's going to sell well. And I think, you know, the PlayStation Classic, I was kind of speculating that I think that it didn't, it wasn't that good because they put some, like a couple of, like must have games on there, but they're they they were probably rationalizing that they're going to release another one. Uh, the library was awful. Yeah. In addition to it just being bad emulation, but I don't know what impact the emulation had on sales. But right. Yeah, I mean, it's too bad because I mean, you know that with them too, it's the the Genesis Classic is going to be good, but yeah, they've just. But it's not going to like. I just don't think that. Like general consumer won't think that there's a difference. They're gonna see there's just gonna be another one on the short store yeah, shelf. Yeah, there's so many of them. I mean, the only way they could probably get past it is be like the other ones were awful, and this one's actually good, and like put that like on the box. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Uh, that would be. That would be a gutsy move, and it would actually work. <laughs> it would work. It would work. Because people would love that honesty. Yeah. But, but they wouldn't. They won't. Yeah. They won't. <laughs> but it would work. It would help. It would absolutely help. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. It, it's exciting to see so much Genesis stuff kind of happen at, the, at one time. But I mean, you know, uh, you know, the manager at one of my, my local game stores said, you know, Genesis stuff just doesn't doesn't move that fast and i said oh i wonder i wonder if you know if, if the mega sg will like make a, a noticeable difference on on like the demand for that i don't know oh we got a we got a canadian five from from mikey hey mikey i can't uh, like every time i see mikey i always think of the scene from uh from goonies <laughs> <laughs> when he's like, hey, Mikey, you got to go to the bathroom? And he's like pouring the water back and forth between the, the glasses of water. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 uh, no comment with it. But thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. I think. Does anyone have have, do you want to have any questions? Like we can do, do a little rapid fire Q&A if anybody is. Uh, uh, Oh, hey, we got we got a 999 from Scott Davis. Oh. Kudos to uh, Kemptress for all the amazing work. I adored a ordered. Super NT. Ordered. Ordered. ordered <laughs> a Super NT and Mega SG to go with an AVS, Analog Charities, an NT Lite or something for holiday 2019. Cheers. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll throw that out there. I, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, but I think that, like the amount of development that would probably take is, uh, I mean, because you can't include like the same amount of cores or anything like that. I mean, you could, but. No, well, I mean, you wouldn't I want mean, to, I guess, this time around. No, I mean, it would. I mean, in my mind, it would be like a. It would be like a, a super NT or Mega SG type thing in terms of features, but you know. Right. That's 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 that's, that's me dreaming up ideas with. <laughs> with the man in charge listening, so. <laughs> Are there any underused there... hardware features in the consoles Kevin has worked on? Uh, Features that's surprising. Blast, blast processing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Super Nintendo has that um, 
RGB per pixel mode seven thing that like only like two games used. I don't know if that counts. Is that what the rendering ranger used or something like that? Or was it... No, it's used on uh, Act Razor Two. I think is the only thing I know that uses it. Huh. So I had to implement that feature for just like basically one game. What well, What was the feature again? I I, I lost you there. Uh, well, normally you have a palleted, um, you know, palette color palette, but on there you could do like RGB directly instead. Huh. And that was like the only thing that used it. Yeah, another two dollars from Mikey. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there's something that says someone said the way that the glare is on Kevtris's glasses make him look like a badass. <laughs> <laughs> like you know when you think of batman how he has like the white eyes in the in the in the comics and the in the uh animated series uh what is the uh, word, what, on, what analog is the word on oh god you can read uh, it. what is the word on analog releasing the DAC for the super nt and mega sg is the reason i have avoid buying those consoles it's it is promised in the mega sg instruction manual and and kevin's been talking about a little bit here so i mean yeah no word on when, I guess, but. Well, someone asked how much weight I lost. I lost 60 pounds. Wow. Oh, wow. Since since when? Uh, last, I don't know, year, year and a half, something like that. So I exercise six times a week now also. Oh, wow. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something I got to do, got to do more of. And, you know, it's... It is hard to make time for it, but I think that the whole thing is you just got to say, like, all right, I'm going to do this. You just, you just got to do it. You know, you just got to you got to make the time. Yeah. Well, like even in the middle of all that development, I still made the time. Mm -hmm. And probably it was, it just was, like, it, like it was useful, too, so I could do that and think about a problem while I was, you know, I didn't have a thing in front of me. So I could just like think through the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that's I when I would go to the gym like very regularly that would uh that's where i would do a lot of a lot of my thinking of like working on like oh okay, so i gotta like thinking about scripts or thinking about like like editing challenges i mean that's what i need to do i need to just like i have a, i have a membership i now that the, the weather's gonna be nice again i can uh can ride my bike to the to the gym my, my, mikey, it, mikey attached a uh, a question to his uh his, his next donation, thank you. Uh, he says, Sega CD too hard to implement on Mega SG. Well, it, it's it's a, it's a whole other system. Yeah. It's basically a whole other Genesis and then some. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. Like, the, the Turbo Graphics and the PC Engine, the CD add-on for that is just a disk drive. There's no extra hardware. The only extra hardware you add that is the system card that you put in the game card slot that just adds like extra RAM. Uh, but the add-on itself, just a disk drive, essentially. Sega CD is way more than that. Yeah, the Sega CD, I think it's kind of funny. It's sort of like a Super Nintendo. You know, it's like Sega did does what Nintendo did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, wow, we got it. We got. Uh, I don't. I don't know how this translates, but but thank you. Regardless, we got yeah. gats with. I'm guessing fifty Hong Kong bucks. <laughs> uh, awesome. Any word from Kevtris fixing scan lines in both 720p and 1080p? Right now, scan lines only display correctly in 720p when height is set to 719. Instead, weirdly enough, that I I wasn't aware of that. I do they. Not look correctly and it it, it full three X height. It's on the list. I'll look. Oh, into... I, I never noticed yeah. it myself. Yeah, it, it, it's on the list. The look into the scan line thing. Yeah. Speaking of which, were were you I, I, were you aware that in seven twenty p the hybrid scan lines like in the lightest colors? I think it's this way on the Super NT as well. Like the lightest colors, like. You basically can't see it at all on 720p. I, I kind of guess that was how it was supposed to work, but I it's wasn't not sure. Supposed to work, yeah. Okay, yeah. I never it, it, the scan line, so I never really like noticed. Yeah, <laughs> in, in, in 1080p, you can still see it on the lightest colors, but I was just guessing like 
there's not enough resolution to really draw very thickly on on 720p for the hybrids. Yeah. So I, th- I think I think reg- normal scan lines I think look best on 720p, and hybrid I think look best on 1080p. Yeah. Well, it's on the list to look at and work on. So I just it was uh, stuff to do that I'm doing. Uh, Var- Vargas with five dollars asking, uh, "You plan to do anything with the Game Boy uh, or Game Boy Advance?" And if someone was interested in learning how to do this themselves, any suggestions on where to start? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't think anybody. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, GBA would be a lot more complicated because it's 32 bits, even though it's not like a very powerful 32 bit, I guess. Yeah, I don't know much about the Game Boy Advance, other than it has some ARM CPU in it, and it runs Game Boy games. That's about all I know. Yeah. So there's another one from... Oh, uh, Mikey asked, you mentioned the list. What's on the list? You oh, know? a lot of stuff. <laughs> You're saying like, like, like 50 things or something like that. I got like 50 or 60 things on the list, yeah, that I'm going to work through for this. I mean, you just kind of pick pick one thing and just like stick with it till it's completely done or do you just whatever you just kind of feel like working on uh, it just depends you know i try to fix all the really important things first mm-hmm. and then add a bunch of the more like fluffy things that you know make quality of life improvements right right and you know people have suggested things i thought was a neat idea so i'll add it <laughs> Uh, I see show is mentioning that if you look hard enough, you can find the list on the, the classic gaming discord. Um, ah. you, you spend a, a lot of time in the classic gaming. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's, that's open for people, anybody to join. I think anybody can join it. Yeah. I just sit in there. Like I sit on IRC or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and you did something a couple of weeks ago where you were kind of, you were working with like different people in there while you're working through and fixing a bunch of making a bunch oh, of yeah, like, bugs uh, when i'm fixing bugs i'll just talk about it in there just because people like to see it yeah have you guys heard going on is almost completely translated for snes i actually did hear that that's oh, that's I exciting bet. that's that's actually the most accessible going on game that doesn't <laughs> that, 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 that to play without a translation but uh i would love to replay it uh with the translation and see uh check that out it's an excellent game. <laughs> uh, Electron Ash is asking if you'll be doing an Apple on the next version of the Mega SG and removing the headphone jack. <laughs> Maybe you just put a little, uh, you can put a little lightning connector there instead. I really like that headphone jack, actually. Yeah, no, I think that's, it's, it's like such out, a, I mean, like there's some people say, oh, why, why is that even on there? But I think it's, it's a great little, it's something you didn't have to do, but you did it because it was, it's like kind of a cool homage to the, the original Genesis. You know, it's just like plus, a cool thing to have. Plus, I guess, you know, if you hooked it up to an analog system, you could get a more analog y sort of sound, I guess. I that's mean, what someone's looking for, I, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's such a cool thing to put on there. It's a really high quality uh, headphone amp and DAC in there too. I was listening oh, really? to, uh, with my really good headphones when I was playing <laughs> like music CDs, and it sounds like really good. Really? There's no background noise or anything on it. At least on mine, there isn't. I should nice. I, I should do that. I, yeah, I you, heard somebody you, you say... did the testing for that. I I, I actually have... well no I did I did very briefly test the headphone jack. That's right. <laughs> Another two dollars Canadian from Mikey says, "Will we will we see the 8-bit Mini NT cores re-released?" Um, I mean, I, I, I well, they're on the NT Mini. They got released there, right? Yeah. But you just wondering if they, if they're going to be re-released. But I think that's kind of like you're. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, couldn't tell you. Unfortunately, though, I mean, like we were just saying, like it, it's crazy how much the NT Minis are going for on eBay. Absolutely, yeah, crazy. seriously. Um, all right, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Wow, that was that was that was that was a 
That was, a, that was a good stream. I can't believe so many people showed up. Well, uh, some, so what we'll have to do, we'll have to match 600 viewers at some point during the year. And then, you know, when, uh, when, uh, Kev Triss's next project is, is out in, uh, early next year, probably. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to break a new record next time. You know, what, what we got for it? 800 maybe <laughs> maybe yeah, I, I see 638 that... how many i saw yeah that was the max i saw yeah it's, it's, i have to look back through but yeah i mean i'm seeing it may have like passed at this point like it's like not not my graph anymore uh i see that uh matt Zato is saying is this the discord and that does appear to be the correct link to it i just i recognize the icon And, and good night to Brentonius with the, the 549. <laughs> good night, good night. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Keptris. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's, it's, it's always an enlightening experience like <laughs> to learn all about the inner workings of the system. Um, and thanks to everybody who came and hung out and the crazy amount of donations. And uh, hopefully uh, JF can, we can get his... Five hundred dollars. Let, let us know if you get that. Yeah, he, he sent us a tweet. I'll, 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 he sent us a DM on oh, Twitter. Okay. We can Very help good. him out with that. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night. Bye.